probably here. So uh, let's go call this meeting to order and uh, start off with the uh, public hearing of the proposed <coughs> FY20 budget. Judy? Judy. Okay. Dr. Wool. Okay. Um, <coughs> after our um, meeting with the select board and the uh, finance committee, um, we have uncovered some new information um, I need to share with you. And also we've done uh, some scenario playing out three different versions of, of the budget so that you can kind of think about it. So um, the larger of the packets is the first scenario that I'll kind of walk you through. It's the most complete version of everything that's here. Um, the other two versions we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Um, so um, on the page two of the handout, this kind of gives you an overview of the changes <coughs> to uh, the budget as it currently stands in this particular scenario. So we have some salary, projected salary increases or salary changes and then some projected um, operational changes and what the net change means to the budget overall. Um, we've had a significant increase in collective bargaining issues for a couple of reasons. Number one is that um, there are steps on the salary scale that teachers um, move as they get more experience, so we factored that in. Uh, the district is currently in collective bargaining negotiations with the union, so we have uh, projected an adjustment, but well, that has not been finalized yet. Um, but we did put something in the budget to uh, cover for that. We have had to move a fair number of salaries that were being paid for from school choice back into the local budget, and I'll speak to why that is the um, reason. Um, we have added a classroom teacher to this particular version of the budget um, for an additional sixth grade that will be coming on. This also reflects a cut of the Spanish teacher and reduction of occupational therapy services from 0.9 uh, uh, full-time equivalents to 0.8, and it cuts three instructional assistants. Um, there are some non-union increases um, that, are, again, are just projected cost of living, so <coughs> some change in the cost share that Sunderland has with the rest of the towns in, in the uh, district. Uh, it reflects a change in the work year for 12-month employees. Usually it's 260 days. 52 weeks times five days um, is how you calculate it. Next year is an unusual year. It will be 262 days, in part because of leap year, and then that makes for an extra Monday somewhere. Um, so that's what that's about. We also added some money to uh, substitute days based on spending uh, trends across the board. Uh, administratively, um, there are some projective increases in cost share changes. Uh, Back when the former business manager left the district, <coughs> money was taken out of the business manager's salary line and put into contracted services. I work for a company called PMS, or uh, the Management Solution. We are providing interim based into management services, but because we're a contracted service, that's where the money has to be spent from. Um, you'll see in a little bit that money has gone and shifted back up to the salary line, so that's um, what the overall uh, salary changes are about. When we get down to operational changes, first thing on the list is um, that shift of the money from uh, contracted services back to the salary line, and it's because our TMS contract will end on July 31st, um, which will give us a month overlap with a new business manager. Um, there are some other smaller uh, increases and decreases that I'm not going to necessarily uh, talk through. Um, we've done some things. Um, to just shift some, some costs around from lines that were not necessarily being spent in some ways um, to lines that are being spent in different kinds of ways. Um, there is a line for separation costs, which had no budget in it uh, for this year. We'll have some budget in it for next year because of a couple of retirements at central office. Um, so the actual projected operational changes to the budget is decreased by 3.51%. However, when you put it all together, the net change to the budget is $303,194, which is an 11.65% increase. Um, so how did we get here? And page three sort of tells that tale. Um, school choice is driven by the number of students who choose to come to Sunderland Elementary School. Um, the base 
for that is $5,000 per student. But if a student has special education needs, there's a special education increment that's also added to school choice. Um, and so the money differs depending on what the child's needs are that are being met. Um, careful records are kept, and then that is filed with the state so that the increment comes back into the town. So um, the original um, cherry sheet in FY18, the um, school choice was calculated at $390,518. In December, there's an adjustment. October 1st is a big date for all of the schools in Massachusetts. It's a date when we take the census of all of the students who are within a school. And then in December, the department sends out adjusted numbers depending on who's claiming school choice uh, students. So the December adjustment in FY18 um, came out at $334,592, or a reduction of $55,926. And unfortunately, that was not picked up in the bookkeeping at the time. Um, there was an accounting error. Um, so school choice began to outspend, which we saw, which if you look back in time a little bit, school choice has been outspending the amount of available revenue coming through the door. You get to a point where there's a tipping point, and you can no longer sustain that, and that's where we are right now. Um, so school choice going into FY19, was 334,592, which was less than anticipated. We have just had a December adjustment of $14,220, so that brings school choice down to 320,372. We also um, discovered within the past few days um, a student that was incorrectly um, claimed for um, Sutherland that needed to be claimed by another community. Um, so there's a further reduction of $57,500. Um, I've spoken with the folks at the department um, that has been taken care of at this point in time and the reduction to revenue from school choice has begun um, to, account, to account for that. As a result, um, what we had originally seen on a cherry sheet for uh, school choice revenue of 32372 going into fiscal 20 has now will be reduced to $262,872. And when the House does their version of the budget, that number will be on the cherry sheet. Um, and again, that's for, um, as uh, it was told to me by uh, my contact at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So based on all of that, we have an anticipated school choice shortfall for this current fiscal year of $22,337. So we're working now to find ways to offload uh, expenses into other fund sources, including the local budget. Mr. Parshevsky has uh, frozen uh, discretionary lines in his budget so that we can use some money to help mitigate against the school choice dilemma. Um, so the carryover, as you can see, um, to fiscal year 20 is $7,662.77. Um, we've done some reductions to um, this budget, reflects some reductions to the FY20 budget. As you can see, there are three instructional assistants. Um, we're going to try and use the school lunch revolving account to pay for the food service director's salary, which that can uh, support. We're going to um, get, we've uh, eliminated custodial temporary services. We've been able to shift part of um, the early childhood uh, coordinator salary into a grant. Um, we're hoping that uh, we can work with the town to do a uh, warrant, a uh, special article uh, for town meeting to offset the central office retirements because that's a one-time expense and it will be done at the end of this year. Mm. You can see the cut to Spanish. You can see the reduction to uh, occupational therapy. Um, we had originally thought about um, putting art up a little bit, but we've put it back. And then um, the special education transportation, we were able to eliminate some uh, money. We had put in an estimated amount and have gotten a more firm number back from our special education transportation provider. So that's going to save us $5,200. So the total reductions overall were $133,970.39. Um, so, because of this latest um, additional reduction to school choice, we had to take a school choice, we had to take a teacher salary that was being paid by school choice and put it back into the local budget for next year. 
in order to keep that teacher. So um, that is part of this budget scenario. So the net reduction really comes down to $81,000 versus the one point three because of the addition of, because of the movement of that teacher salary from choice into the local budget. So that's how we got to where we are. back into choice? No, it's in the local budget. It's in the local budget. Yeah. Oh, I see what yeah. you're saying. So, so the impact. Right. Right, right, right. right. Oh, also, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that impact of that um, from the 28, excuse me, the FY18 mm -hmm. um, uh, um, you know, number on school choice at 390 also carried forward into the, when we were doing the budgeting for FY19. Yeah, and I discovered that as I was looking through the back records, right. that, that that budget had been for the FY19 budget had been was figured out counting that that full three estimating our choice based on what we were right. yeah, working on from the 18 right so, that, so it so sort that, of double compounds that fifty-six thousand dollar problem right is what it does so um, <clears throat> the next couple of pages are um, the cherry sheets you know, for those of you who don't know. Back in the day, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and I was a young school administrator, um, we used to get cherry sheets mailed to you on cherry pink paper. So that's why they have, uh, even though they no longer come on cherry pink paper, they're still called cherry sheets. So um, what the cherry sheet does is as the budget goes through the process at the state level, it lets all of the municipalities and regional districts know what their um, funding sources are going to be. It also lets all municipalities know what your assessments are going to be um, that the state is going to charge uh, you. So um, if you look um, at the very top of page four, um, chapter 70 is the state's funding um, to help with uh, public education. Um, if you've been at all watching any of the news, you know that the state funding for education formula is old. It goes back to 1993. It has not been updated in 25 years, and there's a, a great move on the part of several um, to uh, get that number up. So the governor's budget um, proposes a modest increase to school choice in the usual way things go, the House and the Senate versions will usually increase that number anyway. And as they begin to, to talk about how the, what they call the foundation formula that drives Chapter 70 reimbursement, um, how that will play out in light of some bills that have been filed to, to make the formula right will remain to be seen. <clears throat> Offset receipts, you can see that um, back in uh, 2019, it was 334, 592 for school choice receiving. The governor's proposal was the 320, 372. Uh, based on my conversation with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education last week, um, that um, number will come out on the House budget as 262, 872. And again, that's accounting for that $57,500 um, shift. Um, you can see general government aid, which, um, you know, for a lot of schools doesn't really matter a whole lot, but they don't know what matters for the town side because it's all one big pot of money, so just so that uh, you can see that. On page five are the assessments that are charged um, to towns. Um, so you can see that um, particularly the ones that apply to schools, which is down at the bottom, the tuition assessments, the school choice sending tuition is up um, a little bit. Charter school sending tuition is no longer um, a part of the, of the budget, and whether that's a child that's chosen to do something else or has moved on to Frontier, that I can't answer, but um, you can see that difference. So there is, uh, you know, a little more going out in, in tuition um, assessments uh, than last year. So the net change to the town in terms of money coming in versus money going out is around $2,000 less this year um, than in fiscal 19. Now again, where that lands as this walks through the, bu the budget process, um, I'm guessing that you know hopefully it will at least be level, if not a little bit higher than the, um, last year's number. But um, we have to wait for that to play out with the legislature. So that sending is that that's a lag from what we what happened will have happened this year. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. 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 It's based on. This past October one right. enrollment, 
which is the only number they really right. can base it on. Yep. And then again, that December adjustment happens. Right. So, um, on page six, you can see um, just some analysis around school choice. Again, this sort of walks us through um, what has happened in terms of um, balances forward, um, the net balance forward at the end of last year. School choice is a revolving account, so it's money that the school keeps versus um, having to turn back to the town. So um, 96198 that's what um, was the balance coming into this school year. Obviously, anticipated um, revenues um, are now down to 262872 for a total of revenue in anticipate and in balance of 35970 we have already done some things to um, relieve the pressure off of school choice. The 57.5, that is the new knowledge. Um, we've been able to offset that with some special education extra grant funds that came to us. So that will take care of that problem um, for this fiscal year. Um, so that's a wash. Um, so you can see that um, while there was a budgeted amount of $466,765, um, that we've reduced the amount of spending against that to 381408. Um, even at that, that's a net balance um, of 22,337 to the negative. So again, the budget freezes that Mr. Barshevsky has um, put in place to be able to offset that. We will be doing some transfers of funds to make sure that the account is whole. So the balance moving forward to FY20 is not very big. It's seven thousand six hundred sixty-two dollars, and one child, two children, <coughs> leaving the district or leaving the school could cause that to swerve. Um, it used to be back in uh, back in the day when this all first started was people usually spent a year in arrears, so you kept the money that was coming in, so you didn't have to worry about the shifting sands of, of kids coming in and out, and you would spend prior year's money. Uh, over time, as resources have shrunk to schools and school districts, um, and expenses have increased, that is no longer a practice, and that's not just here in Sunderland. That's <coughs> in pretty much all of the school districts that we come in contact with. And so at some point, those scales tip, and that's where we are currently. So, um, you know, after you look at potentially anticipated salaries moving into FY20, um, you're looking at, at the end of FY20, only having $2,000 to move into, into fiscal 21. So um, this is certainly very concerning and, and something that um, certainly the town needs to think about how um, that's going to be addressed. Um, on page seven, you can see um, the receiving students, what towns they come from, how many students <coughs> they come from that town, what grades they are in, and then you can see the students that get sent out, where our student, uh, where students are going, the number of students, and what grades they are in, and those uh, numbers um, drive the school choice formula. Um, on page eight of the handout, some of the expenses in the budget are borne by all of the towns in the in the district, including Frontier, and some are borne by just the four elementary schools, depending on what um, kind of expense it is. How that is determined is by enrollment, so you can see what the enrollment numbers are, and you can see that for Sunderland, both at the regional level and at the union level, there is a slight downtick to that uh, cost here, but unfortunately it's not significant enough to really uh, mitigate in any substantial way um, within the budget. And then the last um, few pages are the budget line by line. Uh, I'll explain to you a little bit about how TMS does budgeting. Um, we do a system called an all funds budget. We believe in full transparency so that you can see the different funding sources that help um, with the budget. And so um, for the purposes of comparing last year to this year, you want to look at the two blue columns. The pink column in between delineates the total cost um, of something so that you can see what the total cost actually is. And I'll give you a for instance on page 11, if you look um, at uh, teacher's classroom, you can see that um, in the classroom teacher's line, the all funds budget says $879,518, but 
the local budget says $881,518, and you can see an offset by Title I against that, and that's what makes up the balance. So it's our way of showing you this is what something actually costs, but here's how it's being funded, not necessarily all by the local, but um, in part by other funds. And they can be revolving accounts. We have special education revolving accounts. We have um, the school choice revolving <coughs> account, early childhood tuition uh, revolving account, and then we also have some grants. Title I is a grant. Um, the special ed assistance grant is a federal grant that we get as well. So those are the things that uh, we look at as we're funding uh, the budget moving forward. We get to the very end, which is page 16, um, and you can see the grand uh, totals of everything. So last year, uh, or this current year's budget was voted at $2,602,832. The proposed budget um, that this scenario paints is $2,906,000, uh, $906, excuse me, $26, uh, for a difference of, of $303,194 or a percentage increase of 11.65. And that's including a free cash request of the town to take care of the retirements. Um, that's a one-time cost. I'll take a breath. Do you want to see if anybody has any questions before we move on to other scenarios? Or do you want to pause, Mr. Chair? Let's, uh, let's do that. Take a moment to look it over and by all means, uh, we have questions. So I guess if I just to chime in, because you have three different, for those in the audience, you have three different <clears throat> scenarios in front of you. The first one that we just went through is the all in. So this is what it costs to run the school next year with Again, with about $100,000 with the reductions, but the next level gets, I want to say, more complicated, but it starts to cut into programming and such at, at, at some point. So, um, so that's kind of the all-in budget. So we, because we wanted to get all the numbers on one page because um, when we talk about going to the town for money, they ask they want to see it all. You know, so that, that's the idea there. And so in a moment after we digest the first one, we're going to look at scenario two and scenario three. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of plug in the reason why scenario three is on pink is that this is not a budget that we're proposing, but it shows the numbers and we just want to make it very clear. It's supposed to be red. Red doesn't really work with the black ink, uh, but it's really, we call it the red sheet in the sense that this is really, the amount of cuts is not something that we're looking to do, but if, um, if we have to get to certain numbers without support, that's where we kind of where we're going to have to go. So that is... So we'll go into those in a few minutes, but that's why you have three different scenarios in front of you because you have to also look at worst case scenarios um, working through these numbers as well. So that's so we'll get to back to that in a minute, but that's why if people are wondering why we're pausing what these two other sheets mean, that's the idea there. <clears throat> Just to, so I understand, the, the 303194, which is in the bottom of page two and page 16, um, that includes the net reduction of the 81K. So were it not for that 81K reduction, you'd have to be looking at the, the You'd be looking at like a 16% increase, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for every percent, it's $26,000. So you've already, yeah, done a lot of fairly, uh, I'll say unsustainable freezes and things that you, you could not do that year after year in order to even get to the 11. I have a question. Um, this 50, 57,500 uh, school choice F19, can you explain to me again how where, where that number came from? It came from a student that had been um, counted on the census for Sunderland. A single speak. student? Um, wow. Yes, um, for on the Sunderland census, and actually, really was a Deerfield was had choice into Deerfield. So. That the tip, the the base is is um, what is it fifty five thousand five thousand right? Mm -hmm. it's, that's still amazing. You that's still stuck at five thousand. Anyway, um, five thousand. But then there's um, there's increments if, if special education services are 
also included for that student. So that's where it can get bigger or, and sometimes a lot bigger. And we've also got uh, one back, Scott. Can we ask if the net balance in choice accounted on page three is a, is a negative 359 and then on page now I'm going to put over six it shows a carry forward from 18 of 96,000 positive how, how, do, how does right. help me that this is just the, the story on page three is really just the revenue story I'm ten. so it is the revenue story in real time you know I mean if you look in back history um, and I haven't been able to go back fully far because we have a new accounting system that only goes back one year so but I've been searching through some past records you can see over time some pretty significant drops over several years of school choice spending outpacing revenue and so the balance to carry forward every year has gotten less <coughs> and less and less and so when that's happened then you have a revenue shortfall on top of that um, that's really what has just exacerbated the problem um, pretty significantly I appreciate the explanation it's, it's a little confusing to see a carry forward the negative of 55 on, on page 3 oh that's not a, oh, that's, that's not a, a diff difference that's not from a, estimate no it's that's that's not, not, not that's the additional reduction that's not it. a carry okay, forward right? thank you yeah. it's not the starting point for the year got it thank you Ready for the next Ready for the next? So, I, I mean, the, I mean, I think the other thing to just you know be open-eyed about in even scenario one here is uh, you know, especially after our discussion um, recently uh, at the select board meeting, um, you know, there's we still have two ten, two hundred ten thousand, when a little. Uh, Go out of school choice to fund instructional assistance and then whatever the 47 something for a teacher. So there still is, you know, uh, critical <laughs> recurring costs, uh, you know, that are that uh, in this, you know, that are paying paid out of school choice. Um, you know, our school choice, you know, currently, I mean, uh, even with these adjustments, that intake is still pretty significant so you know I don't know that we would ever get to not having any of our kind of recurring costs that we consider kind of baseline education uh, that would that it would be a hundred percent outside of school choice but it it's still substantially um, using school choice for that so, uh, so I just just to be you know when we're considering for the town as a whole and going forward how we want to do this and how we want to navigate um, our budgeting uh, with school choice, just, I mean, we need to consider that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously the, in the midst of the, the, the numbers that we're looking at, uh, we're, we're, you know, how much appetite to take on uh, at once. And in a perfect world, in a school this size, the minimum I would recommend you carrying forward in school choice is about $50,000 to give you that little right. bit of wiggle room. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, that's going to take some time to even get build back to, that. to that point. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And, and to piggyback on that a little bit, I mean, we are receiving 39 and sending 13. Mm -hmm. And depending on what gets cut, if those numbers reverse, then you end up in a situation where the town gets stuck with a bill. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, you know, further exacerbates the problem at hand, for sure. Ready to move on? Okay. Um, the white single sheet is a, sec a second scenario about this. And um, what this does is it cuts the additional classroom teacher that was in scenario one is uh, really the big uh, ticket item uh, there. Um, and um, cutting four instructional assistants versus three instructional assistants. So that's basically the two big items um, that are on the list that are different from the initial scenario. 
So when you get to the bottom line, uh, the net change is $212,085 or an 8.15% increase. Were we to put the additional classroom teacher back in in this scenario, um, that net change would increase to $259,536 or a 9.97% 9 increase. <coughs> So does it, <clears throat> sorry. The, you mean that if we, that classroom teacher, so if we, if we don't add the classroom teacher. Maybe at 8.15. Okay. And then I see, and then with the teacher, okay. Yep. 9 .97. Got it. What's, what's the difference between the 303 bottom line and option in scenario one and the 259 possible spot in Scenario two. That's about forty-four, forty-three, forty-four thousand. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this also, I forgot on the um, decrease side, also takes twenty thousand dollars worth of technology out. Thank you, there was reminding me. Um, takes twenty thousand dollars worth of technology out and potentially has us put it on a. Um, special warrant at town meeting for you know capital expense to fund computers for this particular room in which we are sitting. Um, so the difference between <coughs> 259 and the 303 is part that 20,000 for technology and the other is the uh, one additional is just IA. Right, correct. Okay. okay, and in the 303, the full uh, amount that we've been carrying for technology stuff of 25,000 is included in the 303. The amount, yes. Okay. Full, Thank you. I just, just want to make that clear. Thank you. And so on this sheet, in the, without the, the original idea for those who are, who are just uh, learning about this budget issue, um, is that the early kindergarten numbers came in below 20. And we're at 19 to be exact. Um, and so the idea came that, well, maybe we don't need to go to two sections of kindergarten and we can get the savings there. And so there was a, there was a um, lively discussion at the last meeting with the, the select board and the finance committee. But since then, our numbers have gone up. So more students are enrolling and so we're at 22. And then there's still some questions if it might be even higher there, than There's been some movement back and forth in each direction with folks registering and then mm -hmm. others letting us know um, that they're going elsewhere next year. So we're still at 22 actually so, right now. So at 22, yeah. so the, the original idea was at 19, now we're at 22. So this page is, is a questionable page on whether or not, because 25 is also the max number. It's also not, you can start getting in those mid number 20s. It's, you know, you know not, not the best scenario to be in. So, but that's where this page comes from, where people are like, why is this still here? I still wanted to move the page forward because we were talking about it and I didn't want to suddenly just kind of for, for the not be in front of <clears throat> numbers, I want to emphasize that's what we have on, on paper right now. There's discussions that we're having with um, a couple families who um, will be thinking of enrolling their students in, in kindergarten so that number could t potentially go up. Um, it's just that's what we have on paper right now at this time. Yeah. Right. And it's Three persons different than we had the original idea. Right. And so it's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Is that number, I can't remember, does that include any school choice kids or is that only in? That includes two school choice siblings. Yeah. And there's other school choice wait listed at this time, right? Uh, four or five. to the school choice law if there is if you open seats uh, in your school preference is given to siblings of students who are already choiced into into the school so um, that's kind of how that works yeah there's five on the, the seven total school choice uh, two of which are siblings that uh, scenarios that happen, would it be one teacher and two teacher's assistants, or uh, if there were, if there was one kindergarten class for 25 kids? Um, we're, we're not recommending that. Um, it would be one teacher and three instructional assistants. Yeah. And that also has to do with the, um, 
IEPs within that class as well. So it's not just throwing more people at it and removing teachers, there's IEP requirements that are also dictating the number of IEs in that classroom. And I think we also <coughs> mentioned at the last meeting there's a big difference between 25 kindergartners versus 25 sixth graders. And we've, we've had that, um, we've had 25, we've had 30 sixth graders at one point. Um, in the past five years with kids moving into the district and there's it, it, 18 is a busy class for kindergarten um, uh, and by by law the number can't go over 25 That's good. if I could on, on the individual page version 2 with a, a net of 259 at the top of the first category it says reduce addition or cut additional classroom teacher and then under net change it says plus additional classroom teacher which, which one are we having a discussion about right now i think right now we're looking at the 259 mm -hmm. number that would put that classroom teacher back in but so so the the, the top cell is replenished at the base between 212 and 259 correct got it thank you Yeah, I'm sorry, the idea there was to not have four versions with only one, one line item right, different. Right. We just want to show with that teacher, and the more that the, the more information we're getting is it looks more and more difficult for that to be one of the scenarios moving forward. Yeah. So um, I'm not, can't, it's the school committee's decision on those kind of things, but it's, it's you know, uh, it looks tighter and tighter as the number gets closer to 25, that that's going to be, a, um, you know, or even as we say, yeah. we didn't, when the first idea came out, the administration side of it was not thinking the number was going to get to 23 or 22. It was, well, if, we, if, this is under tw if this is under 20, you really can't split and have two classes of mm -hmm. 9 and 11, you know. A few, few years back, we were looking at the same numbers of 18 or 19 students with our current fourth grade class, and that actually stayed constant from the beginning of the budget planning process all the way to the fall, and now... Um, that fourth grade group is at still at 19 with some kids coming or going. So it's you know kind of a, a crapshoot for families moving into town. You just never know. So that additional teacher we're talking about is we're talking kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this one, yes. Yeah. Yes, it would be. Well, it, it would be a new fourth grade teacher. New new sixth fourth grade teacher. Yeah, new sixth grade teacher. Because you need two yeah. sections. Right. Yeah, we're doing some, we'll be hiring for a new fourth grade teacher. Yeah. Can yeah. you follow that? Yeah, you right. It's a domino thing we move yes. forward. Yes. Got it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, I don't know who was first. I, um, so if you do stick with the two classrooms of kindergarten, would that be two aides in there then based on need in each classroom or would it be like one in each? Because you said if there's one teacher, there'd be three aides. So if it's split into two, sure. how many aides We're, in each we're projecting that one classroom having two instructional assistant supports and the other classroom having one. So, um, but uh, we have our, our kindergarten screening comes out uh, and is starting in May. And so we get a better idea of, of needs. For income so I don't know if you know the percentage of needs, but it sounds like you should probably be aiming, like if you took in more choice, to probably cap that at like 15 kids, ideally, because I don't know, it sounds like there's a lot of needs and you don't want, you know, 18 kids if you sure. have a high percentage of the, needs the, in the, kindergarten. The, the, the practice that we've been following is to cap uh, K through two <coughs> classes at 18 um, with filling with school choice. Um, but also leaving room in each grade level in case there is move-ins. Yeah, I'm just saying based on the needs, like you can have mm -hmm. a class that has lower needs and you can not worry so much about adding, but um, you can start another <coughs> class with high needs to yeah. just fill it because that's your quota. Like, I, I agree, yeah. We, we only recommended a few. Um, we were on 25 or 26 at this time last year for kindergarten. We only recommended a, a few school choice openings. Um, I could pull that up, um, but now we're at 32 students in kindergarten for this year. Yeah, so like if you would accept, if you have the two classes and you accept, well, that's 27, so it's like 13 and 14, you still have room for a couple move-ins, possibly adding a couple choice in August if you had mm -hmm. room, but. Yeah. 
it sounds like realistic and doable. I mean, I don't think one teacher with 22 kids with three eights that, I mean, I wouldn't want to be a parent of a kindergartner going into that situation. I'm not recommending that. Yeah. No, absolutely not. <coughs> and just to clarify, as long as we're on that topic, so if we were to go with a scenario where we had two sections of kindergarten, yes, right, uh, what would your recommendations be as far as choice in? I know you say there's some wait lists. I would say recommendations for choice in would not exceed 30, 32 students total, yeah. um, which would give us some wiggle room on the other end. But it would also generate some, some budget to yeah. offset the teacher. Yeah. Anyone else? There's, I mean, that's, I mean, that was a good point there. Yeah. Is that we're not, we didn't put in the numbers if we do two classrooms and then we accept the seven school choice students in, the, the revenue we get there to offset moving forward, we also have to look at the sixth grade going out to see what that number is offsetting there. So there is some, and you could, you could essentially get more school choice because now there's room mm -hmm. as well. But that's, uh, again, you don't, we don't, we're not sitting budgets gambling on what's coming in um, and that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> awesome. so. If we do have the two classes and there are additional slots, is this the kind of thing that can sort of be marketed that we're looking for kindergartners that want to come to a great school district? Um, some schools advertise on Facebook. Uh, other schools put ads in the paper. So it's, you know, it's definitely something to consider. Um, but it's just, you know, you got to be careful with the, the transient nature of our, our community. Yeah. Forget. We've always had some way of, of getting it out. It just, right? I mean, uh, the the school the, that we have school choice goes out through some form of. Yeah, so it has to be advertised. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's one of those things where I mean, I'm hearing this as I go to all four of the elementary schools. This is the same. Let's get more school choice students to come to our school. So it's the same kind of everyone's looking to fill out their rosters because it is, you know, if you have 15 seats taken, you can put a couple more in. It, it, it um, makes your budget a little bit healthier. So it is the same. It's the, every school is trying to do the same thing. So it is important that we get the word out there. And I think word of mouth in um, our communities as they go into communities is probably the number one way um, people choose schools. Um, but you know, we're talking about that. Um, making it easy on our websites and that kind of thing to learn more about the school and access um, enrollment forms. So I'm just kind of putting it out there because I was at a meeting this morning where Waitley was saying the exact same thing, and I know Deerfield's going to say the exact same thing, and then and Conway says the exact same thing. You know, they, they, everybody wants a few extra students to fill out their classes, and um, so even within our own district, we I know right now we just care about Sunderland, but it is you know. How you, how you market and how it's usually word of mouth is probably the number one way of uh, people choosing their elementary schools. <clears throat> we want to talk about. I mean, well, let's talk about scenario mm -hmm. three, what it could be. Right. Can I just ask, is this set in stone that the Spanish teacher is going to be cut so there won't be a Spanish program at the school? Is that right? <coughs> Nothing is set. No, no there, we haven't. Quoted on uh, any budget. Okay. Um, on all three scenarios, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is these are the, tough times. The process where administration presents us what they, you know, is, feel is responsible budget with the, the financial circumstances, and then um, it's up to us to <laughs> do with that. Uh, the, you know what we think best. So. The, the Spanish, mo the Spanish um, enrichment has been here for a few years, and we've shifted a few um, through a few different models. Um, the first of which was all classes receiving 25 minutes of Spanish uh, one time a week, um, and the current model has uh, Spanish quarterly for 30 minutes. Um, so it ends up not being too many 
classes that each group gets. So, yeah, it's already pretty minimal, right? It is, yeah. <coughs> Yeah. So, looking at the pink sheet, um, that's what the numbers look like if you um, we went down the. If you had a look at everything that we could cut outside of the general classroom core academics. Um, and, you know, again, I, as I said, I put it on pink paper so that people didn't accidentally pick it up and not realize what they're looking at. Um, it is, we need to show that, you know, we can, you know, what is the savings when you do cut the extra exploratory specials um, that we have? Um, by no means is a recommendation from the administration to do that, but you have to be able to show, you know, those are costs in our budget and those are things that could be reduced if um, if needed, I guess, or forced to. I understand this is not a situation any of us want, um, but in theory, if you did cut art and general music, how would the general class, general ed teachers get their prep periods? We looked at that scenario and would um, be with instructional assistants. Wow. Doing what? What activity would the children be doing with the instructional assistants? <laughs> Uh, we, we haven't planned that out for the full year, but um, th this this is just reflecting <coughs> what's in the contract, right? It's, it's no, we're not recommending this. Yes. yes. So like, at actually all. within yeah. those budget cuts, we actually <clears throat> within those two classes, we had a budget um, twenty about twenty five hundred dollars to pay the IAs to cover those classes. Yeah. So there is actually you know um, in our reduction sheet. Um, within that, you know, we had to offset that. It was actually okay. So it's not dollar for dollar on that cut. We actually have to pay for supervision because we have contracted prep periods in which this is when that takes place for the teachers. So um, the other kind of comment is, well, you could cut. You don't have to cut everything. You could cut some things. Well, um, I wasn't going to go whether or not I like, you know, what instrument my child plays, and then put that one on here. It shows it all. Um, you know, all the specials being cut because you know, I think we value each one of them. Um, and so I just kind of want to put that out there. Someone's, you know, we could, one could have a lower enrollment, we could and, look at that, but it, we believe the whole, and, the whole we, package. We, we value what's happening inside these classrooms as much as, ha as is happening inside the four walls of each homeroom. Um, and, and it's all on an equal, equal playing field. When I look at this, I see 20, only $27,000 reduction based on all those cuts. And I don't see how you keep school choice kids if you say we don't have to offer anything special in our school. The chances of not losing five kids to that seems minuscule. We lose a lot more. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I don't see how that's actually a cost savings. If we have to meet what we can afford to spend, though, that's what the, I understand. You're exactly right. It would cause a domino effect, would cause the more things. But um, it is a, I don't know where you get the $27,000, it's $107,000 of expenses. There. I'm comparing 207 to 235. Right. The, the, that is the um, reduction collective bargaining number includes putting the classroom teacher back into the budget at the outset. At the bottom of that pink sheet, you can see if we took the additional classroom teacher out as well, that's another $47,451 on top of that. So the net change with the teacher in is a 6.75% uh, increase. Take that extra teacher out, we're down to 4.93. And that's really about as low as we can go. We had to get that over. Yeah. <coughs> so certainly none of us likes this. I am a former music teacher. That was a painful one for me to do. So I'm just going to tuck it aside. So uh, looking at scenario one, if we were going to 
recommend this and try to go forward. This, this, this kind of a number would require an override for the town. Correct. In the event that we recommended this and an override from the town were to fail, is our red sheet the kind of cuts that we would be looking at would probably end up? So, <clears throat> good question. So, the first sheet is, you know, clearly we know, you know, we understand that that would require an override, and that's why we put everything in because we don't want to get, and I know we're running off of um, your prior was an override as well, and we're doing back to back, which is never a popular thing to do. But there's no way you're going to go back again a year after that. So, the idea was to show all expenses in that. If um, the override was to fail, depending on where that number had to get, we're showing you all the expenses. You know, I mean, there's, a, there's some moving parts where, you know, um, they're not accounted for. Do they, does the house budget look different? It's not gonna look that different, but it could save some things. Um, you know, those kind of the collective bargaining agreement has not, been, has not been done, would that look different? You know, that, you know, so there could be shifting of things around, but there's, there's in order to get to that number, you're seeing what has to be done. <coughs> And there's, and we gave you the line by line item um, of the budget. You're welcome to go through and ask myself or, or Ben. Um, you know, those numbers, there's just nowhere, there's nowhere else to, you know, you could trim $500 here and $500 there. You know, maybe we'll use less copy paper next year than, you know, those kind of things. But to actually get to the number that we have to get to is, um, is, is people and programs. And so that's that's basically what the pink sheet shows that is to show that. And so and I do recommend people to go through and look line to line and, and ask questions about it because it is. I mean, you have to put your reading glasses on because it's so small type, but it is. A, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of it, it's a lot of stuff on the table, but it is. <coughs> <coughs> that's a good point, though. It's just uh, I see we have a number of members of the the select board here. Um, in terms of talking through the mechanism, of what happens. We, we recommend a budget uh, if it's one that includes an override. Uh, it would have to get approved at the town meeting, and then it would also have to pass the ballot box. And to your point, if it doesn't do both of those things, right, then, then where does that leave us? Um, yeah, you, you really can't go forward with any choice without having a plan B yeah. if, it, if it fails. That's, and that wouldn't be responsible, I don't think, to do that. Oh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I've been at the last couple of selectman meetings, and there was um, obviously the one last week where we presented the budget, and there was um, discussion about uh, problems with the school budget, but there wasn't, um, at that point, a sense of how the rest of the town numbers stood. Uh, at this second meeting last night, there was at least the initial cut at how the overall town numbers stood, um, you know, before, you know, based on what the different departments, including the schools, had requested. Um, and I went back and looked today just to sort of put together a, so anyway that discussion last night showed that based on all the requests from the departments and the request from the school that at that point with the increase of 193,000 that if you took um, you know with analysis of the available revenues there was a uh, the town has a formula for using a certain percentage of its free cash each year to help uh, support the budget. Uh, the beauty of having a formula is it tries to even it out over years so you don't go in deeper with free cash and then you're left in a really bad situation. So what they've, how they've handled that I think is great. Um, and the bottom line after you did all that was a shortfall of 190,000. Now that was based on um, our input last Monday of 193,000, which is at this point ancient history. I mean, I've been sort of, I think we've all been sort of battered here by uh, this latest thing on the school choice. It's just, 
you know, I, said, I would say that there are two things that happened as far as uh, to our budget in the uh, in the eight days since uh, we were at town hall last Monday evening, and uh, the first one was that there was a uh, discussion, a good discussion at that meeting about the question of one kindergarten teacher, and I think uh, it certainly impressed me with uh, the fact that that was something to be avoided, if at all possible, based on uh, not only the numbers in hand, but the the, the history of this town is never known who's going to walk in the door and when you run a school you have to take everybody that walks in the door. So that um, that was uh, something I think the number for there is 47,000 or something like that that was suddenly pushing that 193 up and then the next thing that concerned me that was also discussed was uh, the we had uh, put forward a way of um, taking $20,000 out of our budget for technology hardware, which is basically replacing a bunch of computers in here that are already a year or two, or maybe a year past when they should have been. Certainly if we had them on lease, it would be now, they'd be gone because the lease would have been up. Um, but it was like, and I was thinking why, if we take this out, we know we're going to have to put it back in because these needs are continuing and in order to have a budget that is repeatable, um, that doesn't put you in a hole starting the next one, that 20000 for technology really needed to go in. Now I'm saying these, not saying what the town could support, I'm just saying what it is to try and get a, uh, a, a budget that's, you know, not playing tricks. Um, and so there were those two things. The, the other one that had been raised was the question of the retirement uh, cost for the person at the central office of 13000 um, That's debatable. That's, you know, that one is a one-time thing. These things don't come every year, but they do come, you know, they do come on an irregular schedule. And so, yeah, you can make, an, you can make a reasonable argument that one we ought to see if we can get a separate warrant article for. And I think that's supportable, but it's also something that's a little bit um, I don't really like, but I think that's the right solution for this period. Um, so anyway, back to what was then changed from the 193. One was the um, keeping the two kindergarten classes, and the second was the technology thing. And then I walked, you know, I walked into Darius's office this afternoon to have a look at this stuff, and he tells me about the school choice thing where. You know, not only just once, you know, a random school choice person was coded wrong that would be 5,000 and maybe no sped increment at all, or maybe, you know, some rather modest amount of sped increment, but it was <coughs> one of these high cost ones that, uh, uh, lo and behold, suddenly we don't have 57,500. Okay, and we don't have it for this year, and we don't have it for next year. So you say, well, how'd you manage to solve it for this year? Because if you look at this thing, it's solved, and and the, the way that basically has been done and, uh, is that uh, the, the whole sort of SPED program for the four elementary schools is all handled in one account. It's not four separate accounts. And basically the SPED director is saying, I'm pulling mon enough money out of that to the benefit of Sunderland more than should be to benefit of someone by a fair amount more than should be because we got to deal with this problem and this is sort of the only way we can do it. So that we're getting a benefit here. Um, I'm sure there have been times in the past, uh, we're all part of the same union, I'm sure there's been times in the past when we probably, you know, some other town has gotten a benefit and I'm sure that'll be the case in the future, but right at this moment we're getting a big benefit. Um, and that was what's, and that's what's keeping the current year from being an immediate total crisis, okay? For 2020, fiscal year 2020 that we're working on the budget now for, um, you have no choice but to use that lower number going forward because, you know, we have a population, our number for, for budgeting purposes is based on the current population of school choice kids as of, uh, you know, that was as of October 1, um, if, you know, and then you look at it and you say, well, but the final number, that's only, you know, a projection, the final number is going to change on, based on 
how many kids do we actually have? And I've been watching the trend. We get a monthly report on enrollment, and the number in the that was originally part of the 320,000 we thought we were getting, that was based on 40 school <coughs> choice kids. Our monthly numbers have been uh, usually 41, sometimes 42. The last one had 43 on it. So that all I was wanting to make sure was we weren't getting going lower and risking actually being in the hole. Okay, And that seems uh, to be the case, but with this kind of thing, you never know because things change in this. Certainly it's changes in this community, it seems. Um, so the other thing that I, I want to pass on was that in discussions with Sleckman, there was talk about um, just how budgeting works at the school and how difficult it can be. And I've been on that side of things too in the past and from the finance committee uh, point of view and seemed like it was, boy, it was hard to get a hold of things, okay? And there was, uh, there was, there are a lot of people that work here. There are a lot of kids get, you know, come here and spend the whole day here. The money comes from a lot of different sources, okay? The bulk, you know, the largest part comes from uh, the town appropriation, uh, but obviously a, a chunk comes from uh, Chapter 70 funds from the uh, state. Another chunk comes from school choice. Another chunk comes from uh, programs like the <coughs> Uh, early childhood program where there's tuitions charged, there's SPED uh, revolving thing, there's SPED grants, uh, there's the school lunch revolving fund, there are a whole bunch of things that make it all really hard to get a handle on it, okay? And rather than trying to, there's no way I could give you an education on that and partly because I don't still have a handle on it, but what I wanted to give you was just a, 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 a few numbers here that I think actually are worth paying attention to. And it, uh, I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll look here at two different time periods. One is just last year, this year, next year, okay? And in FY18, which is last year, the year that ended last June, uh, the school accounted for 36.4% of the town's budget, okay? 36.4% of the town's budget. In the current year, this is after the override, we account for 35.6%, in other words, eight tenths of a percent less of the town's budget than we did in FY18. We also account the town has a capital budget. In the current year, uh, we're counting for 14% of the capital budget. Just saying that I'm not drawing conclusions. I'm just saying that you know, obviously, some of the other there are a lot of buildings in town that need you know capital stuff, but uh, we have a relatively small proportion of that. And as far as I can tell, we account for none of the debt debt load uh, in the town budget because uh, that debt uh, has been paid off uh, uh, some time ago. Um, and the other thing I, th I thought was interesting. So so our Operating budget is down by eight tenths of one percent of the of the overall town budget, but if you recall, we went for an override at you know spring of last year, and for this year, the whole town budget was up. This is the operating budget. The whole town operating budget was up four hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars. Okay, the schools part, the schools operating budget, was up by one hundred and fourteen thousand. Okay, or only 24% of the town increase. And I bring this up because I had sort of had the impression, the feeling, that we had the override. See, the, the way it works is, we or, the override for last year was, the problem is, if you don't pass an override and you say, we're going to go back and we're going to cut things evenly, you can't cut things evenly because you can't cut the regional school budgets, okay? You just can't because all it takes is three out of four towns at uh, Frontier and I believe two-thirds of the town at Franklin Tech and there's nothing you can do. You've got to pay your bill. So that uh, over the years, the, uh, the, if there was an override that failed and overrides were only um, scheduled 
when there was real reason to. They weren't scheduled flippantly or lightly. Um, there was always, you, you just can't help but thinking, what do we do if the override fails? Because overrides fail more often than they succeed. Um, and it was always going to be a case of the school is going to be hit badly. Okay? And I would take us back to 2009 when the override failed. And if you look at the FY 2010 budget, the overall town operating budget was cut $455,000. $315,000 of that cut, about 70% of it, was borne by this school. Okay. And it's been, that was 2010, it's been nine years recovering from that. Okay, because it's not like we've been getting a lot of big increases since that happened. You go back and you look the years, the increase, you know, basically in the years from starting with 2010 up to current, we've been, I don't have enough, let me just see, I've got the, That number is like over 10 years, 32% our budget has gone up. On a compound basis, that's uh, between two and a half and 3%. Okay, but if you look at the last year, that's starting at a point, 2010, when we had just gone through this scenario. Right. Okay, so the point we're starting at was basically the school was in crisis and serious, serious financial crisis. Okay, if you start at the last point where we had a school that was I'll use the term properly funded, realizing we can argue about what's properly funded, but I would just say funded so that you had the number of teachers you needed and you had the special programs, art, music, and so on. Um, beyond that, I can't say whether something was properly funded, but at least those things were funded. And the increase in the school budget from that point, FY09, to the current year, okay, over 10 years is a total of 14%. And you wonder, because our wage, co our salary costs, okay, are going up to two and a half percent, something like that a year, you say, how did you do it? You know, how do we actually have a thriving school here, right at this moment, okay? And uh, the one answer is we've got remarkable people working here. And the second answer is we basically used up the school choice money. Okay, and whether, I think we, I think it wasn't just people on this committee. I'm sure that, other, you know, Scott, I'm looking at Scott, who is the real financial guy on the board of selectmen, and you knew this was happening. I mean, I think, you know, it's been discussions. What are we gonna do? You know, okay, we knew it was happening, but nobody, really the, the choice is, if you wanna slow it down, and for example, come into a nice soft landing and end up with 50,000 in reserve and do it all the way we think it ought to be done. You got two choices over the last three, four years. Well, you got to either cut a teacher or some art and music and stuff, or the town's got to come up with a bigger number in the budget. Okay. And both of those are hard sells. Okay. So it just sort of the easiest way out has seemed to be go after the school choice. Well, that game is over. Okay. I still think, I look at this and I think that given the, you know, the, the record over the last decade of what uh, modest increases uh, the school has gotten, um, I think it's time that, that uh, we just say that we want, you know, that you basically have to put it out there and <coughs> you have to put it out at the only one of these that makes sense if you're trying to budget over a longer term is scenario one. Because if you're, if you're budgeting some smaller amount to make it a lower number, you're gonna be sitting here next year having the same sort of discussion, okay? And, and certainly uh, in discussions with selectmen, it's, that point's been made clear, you know, when's this gonna stop? Well, when should, you know, the way, to, the way to make it stop is not to come up with some middling thing that, that pleases nobody and that puts us back here again next year. So, I think that we need to, I don't see any choice. And I really, 
I was feeling bad about it, honestly. I mean, I've had a miserable week or more now, and it was just even worse when I walked into Derek's office at one this afternoon and he says, we got another 50 some thousand dollar problem. I mean, I've just been feeling, I mean, it's just terrible, okay? But then I actually feel better now looking at how the school has done over the last decade and how the program it has produced on funding that may be hard to understand, may have money coming this year from this fund and next year from the other fund and so on, okay? Which I don't think is meant to deceive. I don't think it's meant to trick. I don't think it's meant to figure out a way to be getting more money from the town by hiding stuff, okay? They're just trying to run a good program and the numbers here tell me that what they actually are getting from the town is there's no way I would call it exorbitant, okay? It's really, really modest, okay? I'm still thankful for the town for the support. I still think it's, uh, you know, it's not nothing, but boy, it's not, you know, it's, it's not a lot. And the school's a, you know, it's a great school. And if you start, the problem is, again, just to, to, to make sure you understand the process, we can't call an override. You all can't call an override. You all can't petition for one. You all can't show up with a whole lot of signatures and say we need one, okay? It's a decision reserved for the selectmen, both as to whether or not to have one, and if there is one, how to structure it, meaning for a particular department or a particular part of the town or uh, for just a general override for, for municipal purposes, like is normally done, uh, and how much to do it for. Okay, those choices are strictly up to them. Uh, it has to then uh, be, the, the budget would be come to a voted town meeting. Uh, it would be a phrase such that the budget is contingent upon the passage of a two and a half override. Uh, if that passes town meeting, and history is that passing town meeting is generally not the problem, passing at the polls the following Saturday is when the problem is. Um, if it passes at the poll, then you have the budget as approved. Um, if it doesn't pass, then you all get back together and after you've done crying, you figure out, okay, how bad, you know, what are we gonna do because, you know, and then we're, that's where we are. And I don't think, you know, even people who are not wild about, you know, I mean, there are people who, well, I, you know, my kids got educated and I'm not, you know, I don't need to, you know, they're not happy spending any more money than necessary on the school. I really don't think they want to see this sort of stuff happen to this school. And I'll almost say like again, because what happened in 2010 was you had the budget went south, a lot of kids choiced out, okay, choice in was, you know, dropped way off. Um, it cost the town more because we got to pay for the choice kids going out. And we'd have to, you know, we'd, we'd do a budget, but then we'd have to cut it again mid-year because then our new choice numbers would come out based on October 1, and we'd be looking for another 50, 75,000. So I, I, I'm sorry for taking a while, but I just, I want you to understand both the process and my sense of, of you know, we're not being greedy here, okay? We're just trying to, to I think they do a great job running this school. Okay, and I think they do a great job running it using whatever resources we can get and using them in a responsible way. And it's just, we've got to have the resources. Thank you. Yeah. Doug, do you want to I mean, <laughs> I mean, piggybacking on that, <coughs> I mean, I think, um, well, like you said, I mean, I was, looking at similar kinds of areas <coughs> and that, you know, with a, from that FY09 budget, the 2.3, the school budget 2.3 at a, you know, two and a half percent per year is at about three million. I don't know if I'm, my <coughs> calculating was correct. And, um, you know, and I think, and, and, and I was <coughs> talking with somebody uh, recently, and, and it feels like 2009 is uh, fully catching up to us 
uh, and the number that I think was a very responsible number that you, uh, in terms of the needs of the town that was put forward, um, I, I think is still bearing true in terms of what the long-term needs for financing, you know, what we want to do in this town in terms of education and everything else and what we need. And I think, um, you know, again, it's just this crystal ball with, with what's the right number if you, if, if you do go forward with an, uh, an override. Um, so, you know, but again, I see what's on that scenario one plus some, you know, some um, taking off some of that risk of school choice. Uh, if we were really, and again, that's where I'm getting back to, that's where we're back to getting close to what we were in total, including last year's override and what I see was needed is, you know, maybe is, is, is in the getting back into the ballpark of that's what, that's what was needed then, that's what's needed now. Um, somehow we need to figure this out um, and not do damage to, to all the departments, including the school. Yeah, I, I, I like particularly what Peter, you summed it up, I thought, very well. How have we done so well with limited increases uh, great people doing a great job, <coughs> but the analogy I would use is because we don't have this revolving money in the SPED and it's not even the 50K or 70K anymore, it's basically down to, to nothing, it, it's kind of like turning down the headlights on a car, right? And so the, the headlights are basically out and then we get hit with these, uh, the school choice misses. And if we had more money in the bank, then it would be easier to ride through something like that. But where we don't, everything that shows up out of the blue uh, becomes a, a crisis immediately. So I, yeah, I, I essentially concur with uh, the, the how we got here and, and what has been funding the difference between what we're taking in and what we are uh, need to spend. Stacy. Um, so last year we did have the override and I recently heard that the 200,000 that was passed was one of the lowest or the lowest that they've ever brought forward, but it passed. But I'm wondering if the number had been different last year, because last year it was sold as a reset, like, oh, we just need a reset. And then it just seemed like we'd be fine. And now it seems like we're in a deeper hole. So I'm wondering if last year, like you can't change it, but what would the number have been last year instead of 200,000 that would have solved the problem for this year? So we, I mean, what's going to happen next year? Are we going to find ourselves mm -hmm. in the same situation? Well, that, that's a question uh, you have to ask yourself. I think that's, you that's, that's actually a really, that's well, a really that's easy that. answer. Before the 200. Yes. You need to have had a half a million dollar override last year to fix the request that this school is bringing forward this year. That's just math. You have a $300,000 increase that's being shifted to the town side from years of practices on the use of choice to fund the elementary school. That's easy math, 500,000. What are you saying is needed? 500? No, the question was, well, what would have been an appropriate number last Back year here. knowing Back this here. year? Gotcha. I know there was a follow on, but we'll be here again next year. Yeah. Right. So I think that raises the question. Um, this is an operational gap right we're not looking for capex this is an operational gap so these these expenses will not go down next year Correct. so what is the funding need next year are we going it, you know will we see that much swing in in revenue to to gap this next year or are we going to be in the same place again next year with another gap of two to three hundred thousand dollars because we can't take raises away so, from teachers i mean some of the factors in that right are um, I mean, this year, the, the, the reason um, that we're looking at it, um, additional teacher, right, is having two classrooms coming in, one going out, right? So um, that, that we'll have two sixth grade classrooms next year already. So we won't have that scenario. Yep, we um, will have that two years from now. We will have it, I was just going to say. In 21, 22. So there's that, that's on the horizon. The other piece is, again, if we don't, if we just, if we go with scenario one, um, that ending balance in school choice, 
was, what was it? For <coughs> school demanding balance for school choice that we scripted in scenario you're one. Going into 20. You know, it, anyway, it was low. <laughs> yeah, it, was, uh, it was very low. But, but basically, but, all right. I mean, that is and and, and one child. Yeah, right. So uh, and and um, we want to get away from that cliff's edge in that in that um, and um, so it sounds like we want to cushion for swings in school choice. Be prepared that we will we have another classroom. This is what we were talking about at the yeah. select board. Be prepared in two years' time, we probably have another classroom teacher being added. Right. Um, that's another. So, that's so a, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I think Peter did a great job explaining to this, but I don't think this is a one-year problem. Is what I'm getting at. I think this is a multiple-year problem. And um, do we have a more long-term, sustainable solution? I mean, you understand with an override that when you pass, if you pass an override, then it adds. <clears throat> to the tax levy. The tax levy is the amount you're, elect, you're allowed by law to collect from the town, and it adds to the le tax levy for that year and for all succeeding years. Okay, it's different from what we call a debt exclusion, which is added to the tax levy but only lasts as long as you were paying off that debt. So, for example, one of the things that's going to come off the tax levy, uh, it's got to be still paid this year and next year, I believe. Um, and one more, two, or not? Yeah, two, two. two counting this year. Yeah. Is the uh, remaining debt for the library and the public service building, right. and that'll knock about 160000 off of the uh, tax levy. Two years. Yeah, but we're not getting it. We're not getting it in 20, and I think we're not getting it in 21, right? In 22. In 22, we get it, right? Okay. But it's not like that money gets added and it just goes no, away. No, it just, it, all it affects is what taxes people pay. Yeah. Right, right. It doesn't help your, it does yeah. not help your operating yeah. budget at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if we get the, right. if we were to get the increase. You have to factor in the pending debt that we'll be incurring for, when you're looking at the bigger picture, two for Frontier, which will be upcoming. Yeah. Because that will go on. Frontier's capital plan. We have a fire truck. Yeah, fire truck. Fire truck, that's correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, just to, to <clears throat> the original question a, a couple questions ago was uh, about the two hundred thousand dollar override and this year. <coughs> just, just just to review um, by law we, we can increase our tax levy by two and a half percent on average with the tax levy increase of two and a half percent and new growth because we do have new growth people um, house uh, assessments go up uh, added word whatever we have a total, and I'll just use rough, rough numbers, of $200,000 increase in our assessment ability every year. So, and, and, I, and I think that's kind of an important number to know, because as, as it is right now, when you look at the 300000 that we requested from the, the school, you have 200000 for the entire town. So anything over two hundred, then we're looking at paying through free cash, stabilization, so we have just a, couple, a couple different stabilizations. So if you go back to the Peter's number, 36%, I'll use 40%, 40% of 200,000, you, you're talking about an $80,000 $80, increase in a school budget per year right now of Sunland Elementary. And that would be a livable, well, I would say it's something that the town wouldn't have to be concerned with looking at overrides or anything else. And no, so, so I, I mean, so I, I mean that sometimes we we don't we never I we don't ever talk about that because people usually don't look at the revenue side of the budget. And I'm, and I'm pulling out the um, FY19 summary of changes for Sunderland Elementary School between increase in cost of negotiated steps. Increase in cost of negotiated um, uh, CBA, negotiated increase, increase in cost of degree changes, increase for longevities and non-union salaries. That totaled seventy-five thousand. Yep. Right, and so that's I mean that's what we're kind of up against, and that's without adding a classroom teacher last year. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's right. Negotiating yeah. the contracts are so important. 
and they're done. They're done in private, and no one, no one sees what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when you see when you see an increase of a, a contract of two percent, that does, just so you all know, it doesn't include steps or any other bonuses that are associated with with a salary, longevity right. or whatever. So, so I, and back to the original question, because I, I thought it was a great question. Back to the original question, so what's, what's an affordable, you know, how do you prevent that from happening in the future or happening next year, I think was, was the question. How do you prevent that from happening that next year? I'd like to know the answer. Unless you live with that $80,000 increase, you may put it off this year or next year or the year after, but you come back to the same concern. And, and, and unfortunately, you, you um, what happened? What, what do we first look at? We look at eliminating art. We look at eliminating music. We look, and, and, and personally, when school choice first started, I'm against school choice, totally. But I, I, I believe that makes children into dollar signs versus teaching them. We make them into dollar sign. But when we first started with school, school choice many, many years ago, School, school choice was supposed to go towards enhancement, enhancement programs. It was supposed to go towards um, languages. It was supposed to go to, I, you know, a violin program or pottery class, whatever. That, that's what we're supposed to give our students. STEM, we're also supposed to give them humanities, but that was supposed to come from school choice money. And it ended up, what we ended up doing is we using, using school choice to offset the budget, unfortunately. At some point, I guess we need to close the hearing. I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to end the conversation. I'm just saying that, you know, we still are in a public hearing, and I don't, we obviously got to continue talking about this, but. Obviously, if there are other comments that people would like to make, uh, you know. I am wondering about. I know the last time we met is, um, I think it was three IAs that were supposed to be cut, and I think they were associated with the Horizons program. So I'm wondering what the fourth is. That's number one. Number two, in scenario two, well, in scenario three, it says reduce night custodian by two hours, but that's not in scenario. Two, and I'm just wondering what the night hours are and why it's not in scenario two as well. Um, going in reverse order of your questions, <coughs> reducing the custodial staff already in a building that I think is, um, you know, the way they're having to get all rooms clean is a rotating schedule. Would again, you're not cleaning your investment in the town, and so when you're not keeping things clean, you're not keeping. Um, things are wear and tear, things are going to break. So you, we've kind of had that, that back and forth. You don't take care of what you have. So that has been put on what we call the red sheet because it really goes down to you got to take care of, um, you know, the building that's entrusted to us, so to speak. So that's why it's there. Um, you could move that forward. Again, it's, it's a priority. It's a judgment call. Um, and right now, um, you know, we felt that lesser custodial staff at this point, um, you'd have rooms that aren't, Maybe the trash is done every night, but maybe not, you know, and Ben would probably be able to speak better to this, but I'm kind of, I'm reaching a little bit here, but maybe well, we'd have to do a rotating schedule when things were cleaned and, you know, put together right. that kind of stuff. And um, we do a rotating schedule as it is right now, and it is a community building with a lot of foot traffic coming in um, throughout, you know, even throughout the summer. We house our summer programs. Um, we have extended school year services for some of our students. We have camps. Um, and then it's used throughout the fall, winter, and spring for uh, the rec programs and other groups that come in and use the building. So, um, yeah, that's why it's on the the cherry sheet. It's another area that's not recommended. And the first thing was was the four eight. So, you know, um, we're looking at overall staffing. Ben would have to reconfigure how IAs are using the building, but you know, it's uh, um, it's reducing that again. It's not. It's not something Ben wants to do, and so, but it's, um, and we have to start, you get to a spot where you just have to start moving things and changing your programming in order to meet the financial number, the financial line, and that's that's basically what's happening there. And so I, you know, I'll be honest, I put Ben in that position and saying, you're gonna need to cut another one, we need to get this lower. And 
what does that look like? And that's he's got to figure out based on the needs of students, based on each classroom needs, and based on IEPs and how those are being delivered. So it's a, uh, yeah, you know, again, if, if things don't go forward with the budget, Ben's going to be in that position again regarding other services and programs and how, how you do more with less. That's possible. <clears throat> Yeah, go ahead. Um, what are the next, step for, next steps forward as far as discussing the budget with our select board and deciding what to do? Um, I'll just give you my recollection from last year, which was the school voted a budget. Um, the selectmen, it then goes to selectmen with all the other budgets from the different town departments and the other schools and so on. And um, they, working with the finance committee, put together uh, uh, what's to be presented to town meeting uh, last Friday in April. Um, they have uh, legal deadlines when they have to post warrants and things like that so that you're generally talking that that process needs to be wrapped up uh, sometime, uh, let's say in the first week of April, you know, about that, okay? So that uh, they probably have got uh, one, two, three meetings, let's say, to wrap that up. I don't know if a fourth is getting already too late. Um, and so I would, you know, again, based on last year, it was like, you know, you're slowly, they got to work through um, all the different departments because basically <laughs> as of last night, they had just like, okay, here are the numbers. And then we got to go through and make decisions about what we can support and what we can't support. Um, and that's not an easy process. Uh, and there's a capital budget to be dealt with. And so I would expect that um, they will basically be devoting a chunk of the time at their next three meetings to putting together the town budget and the, the warrant in general for a town meeting. I mean, it's one of the most important times of year for the selectmen because getting ready for town meeting is, you know, it's a large part of what makes this government tick. Is that, is that a fair statement of? Yeah, you nailed it, Peter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, last year I went to each one of the meetings just because I was trying to represent the school, you know, just to sort of basically be able to answer questions if there were about the school budget or participate in the discussion because they're very uh, generous with their uh, allowing of people to, um, you know, contribute. So, if I, if I could, Peter, I think you summed it up really well. While the public hearing is open, I had, I had two questions regarding the actual administration of the budget on an annual basis. Uh, the first is, at time of turnover of anybody in the office, business managers, accountants, etc., cetera, uh, does the district trigger an audit? And if so, could that be a practice in the future? Whether it's a forensic audit or a real-time audit as the current status. I know there's an associated cost with an audit. We, the town audits every single year. I would suggest that maybe uh, there's opportunity to avoid a shift of revenues like we're seeing here uh, years in the rears if that happened in closer to real time, in particular at time of turnover of staff, key staff. The second question was uh, with the calculation of choice in, do, does the district take into account the net outflowing that the town gets hit with on the cherry sheet? And if not, why not? Well, I understand. So if you look at our revenue stream, you see um, state assessments, right? Yeah. So choice outgoing, what you see as a, as, a, as a student count, we, the town, collectively, are assessed that value. So if you were to simply use the net, I know this sounds painful in this current discussion, in this current environment, if you were to use the actual net of the two, choice in minus choice out, you might well have a slightly different revenue picture, leaner, but it might be more realistic because the town gets dinged on that. That's that is what the law calls for. No, I, t I, t I totally get it. And, and I think that uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Hull said in her presentation, mm -hmm. she included the whole cherry sheet there because it was clear that the number going outbound mm -hmm. 
uh, that we're using for this budget is the 69,000 that was in the cherry sheet. Um, so are we aware of it? Yes. Are we offering to say no, we'll cover it in our budget? Um, well, I'm suggesting maybe practice future. I'm not saying in this particular cycle, but at some point, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a function of disconnect between the expenditure of the school committee through the administration for the revenue into the school and it's 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 a, it's a little disingenuous formulaically to recognize that we're paying the outgoing that comes straight off it, it's and i understand I the we, statute i'm just i'm wondering about about a practice for <clears throat> that's all i i think that we talked about this yeah. before and it's not the only item that is Sort of nonsensical in a way because there is also the fact that uh, uh, the health insurance for folks that work at this school is paid for out of the town budget. It does I'm not. Going to add to your percentage, Peter, when you were talking about the impact. Right, and the only one I'm, I'm so there's that one. There is also uh, if there's any fees for uh, under the unemployment compensation matter that paid for by the town. Uh, I believe there's part of the retirement uh, assessment is paid by the town. I believe that the FICA taxes are paid by the town. The only one I know going the other way, and there is one, which is that we uh, bill Medicaid for certain services that are provided here, and that money goes to the town as well. And um, I was told a number of fifty or 60000 in the course of a year or something like that. It doesn't stack up against the others, but it needs to be mentioned. So, um, I would say that we also, I, the one place that I would certainly, I mean, you know, what can I say? I mean, I'm well aware of those things being paid for by the town. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would just add to that. I mean, I think well, we're aware of it in the way that we understand that going in, what we present and what we're looking for and what the town can do is in the context of that. And, it, you know, and especially I think after going through you know, post post FY nine, um, you know, and understanding that our subsequent budgets that we're putting forward are coming to you in the context of you paying even more outgoing school choice. So, I mean, whether we're whether we're whether it's in it is reflected in our budget thinking, I guess, is whether we're not constraining to that same. Um, sense that we can't go negative in the school choice account because that's against law. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I think certainly when we message to the town uh, and caution against false saving of money because to exactly your point, any change that causes the outgoing choice to spike is, right. is uh, a hit directly to the town. Right. right. We, we have no control over it. So if you go in this direction, not only is incoming going down, but outgoing is going up. And could be, you know, like significant numbers. I completely understand the, the, the mechanism. I think we're, we're in agreement on that. My question was directed about the future formula that says, you know, we'll, we know we expect, to spend, we expect to receive 320. We know that there's 69 leaving. We'll actually build 320 minus 69 in the budget. Uh, legally, I, I get where we're at. It's not a bad thing for us to, to acknowledge it during the meeting and, yeah, yeah. and discuss. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Tracy, did you? Um, I had two questions. One, I was curious what the total enrollment is at the school right now. 230, give or take a couple. 230? And then the total number of school of choice in? I have that. I don't have that. 39 and 13. I'm looking at the March 1st enrollment. Page 7 of the package. It's all right, I got it, thank you. I was, I was saying too, I was looking at the, um, on that point, oh, you got another one, but just really quickly speaking back on that, that when we were comparing FY9 uh, to now, the um, K through six Sunderland resident mm -hmm. was, was it 162 then, 165 now, or right, and basically at the same. Uh, is that FY09, oh, and that's resident, so that's not factoring in what we've done with choice or whatever. But. So, to you correctly, our organic, organic and our indigenous enrollment is up a bit, but not a million dollars worth. 
not uh, right. Right. But, Thank you. But but we might I can read off the numbers real quick. I got him as well. Okay. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that our our uh, our costs uh, haven't stayed in oh nine dollars either. Um, <clears throat> right. So which that that was the, the point to the at two and a half percent that would be three million. Right, and not enough for an increase of $1 million, but enough in-town residents that since the 2014-2015 school year, we've added three classroom teachers, we've added one special education teacher, we've increased speech services, OT services, uh, physical education, and art. Um, Applaud the program. I think like, yeah. my question was around organic enrollment. Sure. What I heard was, you know, less than 10 from 2009. Is that correct? I got a number in 2009 of resident PK through 6 yeah. of 186 people. Yeah. And I got a number for, uh, first I'll give the current, which is 188, even though it fluctuates because it shows here two years ago it was 212. Okay, and uh, five or six years ago it was 150. So how do you, you know, and so you say, well, great, what's the trend? Right. There is none. And, there is none. And I don't have the, the staffing numbers from 2009, but I'm, I'm guessing we're similar as far as classroom teachers um, and special education teachers. Yeah. I just want to, did you have a second question? No. Oh, oh. I just wanted to, to throw out there because one thing that we've talked about but haven't really addressed that much is, well, what happens next year, the year after? And some more people have asked that question. Um, I totally empathize with people who don't want to pay more in town taxes. Um, and I definitely encourage people who would like to see good schools and at the same time, uh, you know, understand that we have a certain rate of rise that, that the town will generally support uh, to also reach out to the, the state <coughs> reps uh, and, you know, again, reach out to the governor, reach out to the state house and senate and to talk about the chapter 70 formula. That's something that we've talked about here tonight. Uh, I get that, uh, you know, you have a, maybe a 200K cap per year is the current trend in what the town can do without uh, a two and a half override. Um, I will say that, yeah, 2009, we ended up in a crisis because one didn't pass. We attempted one two years ago that didn't pass. We did get one to pass last year. Um, but again, we were definitely looking to pump the brakes on a disaster. And I think it's pretty clear uh, this year, based on the late breaking surprises and how hard they've hit us, that we do need to turn the headlights back on. It's not enough just to... Uh, um, you know, continue to dig into the, there's no more choice to dig into. Um, we got to work back to the 50, 70 K and we're, our population's growing, which reduces the number of seats available for choice anyway. Um, so, but given the fact that the, uh, the state money is also need driven and population driven. And if we can do when cost of living increases dictate that we need to an override before it reaches a crisis level when that happens then maybe we won't be back crisis to crisis is about what I've got. Yeah, choice that, that's right. Okay. Choice that, that's well, one right. of the things yeah. that we sort of circle yeah. on again yeah. talking yeah. about in it's difficult because we can't have a lot of immediate impact on it is the percent not the dollar amount because the, the, the argument is always made at the state level that we're spending more dollars on education each year, but the percentage of the state contribution to that, because that's another lever and factor that's involved in this, and that has a big effect. When that goes down, where does the burden then go? It goes on all of us. And I, I also appreciate the uh, ability to discuss this because 
we mostly, which has been good, we've mostly been discussing mechanics here tonight, not philosoph like philosophically how we all feel, because I think you'd be very surprised when you talk to individuals about how we all feel about certain things. And um, myself, a number of people in this room have been through this all before. I've been sitting here when they've been talking about kindergarten classes of 25 children with my kids in that same situation. So none of this is new. And this is why it's an imperative that we not just look at right now, but where we're going to go. Because we can't, there's the philosophical thing about the argument about what we want, but there's the political reality of what we can get and work with. And really, when we're making pitches, we need to be looking right there at that. Because the people that we have to convince aren't in this room. The people that we really have to convince won't be at town meeting. Mm -hmm. It's outside. And that's why I made that point earlier, too, that we really need to make sure that we go in with plan A and plan B in case it doesn't hit, because there's a political reality there. And we have to look at the long term, but you, we can't keep going back and back and back. We need to figure out a way to sustain ourselves somehow. And I, I understand that there's a lot more than just the town, because this is why, in the broader scope, it's very important that people get out there, stay involved, and start looking at the Chapter 7 funding, because we are in one of the types of communities, we share a lot of similarities with the Cape, that we're getting hammered by the, by the, the formula, and the formula does need to change. And that's where you need to also direct some attention as citizens is in that direction. But this is this is unfortunate and it's a tough thing to deal with. But we gotta deal with it somehow. And I appreciate the, the discourse and that it hasn't been overly dramatic or anything. We've been focusing on the pure mechanics of it. Because it's it's not easy and it's not pretty, but we've been here before and we're gonna be here again. So I wanna thank you guys for coming tonight. And we've often heard the same stuff before, but you know, it's still the, the I mean, it's we're dealing with this year's situation, and you know, but it's still this, it's still going to be the same problem in terms of you can go through all this process and then you get to the first Saturday in May, and if it doesn't pass at the ballot box, then you just tear up what you've done all the way up to there and you start over with something a lot more unpleasant, and so that's hanging over whatever we come up with here and um, people got to do some work. Anyone else? Sounds like we're ready to wrap up the initial hearing. Can okay. I have some more questions? Sure. So scenario one would require an override. Scenario two would require an override, but maybe less of an override. Is that correct? Yeah. And scenario three would be no. This is what we're looking at. If we we don't. I mean, I know some is still up in the air, but I just want to make sure I understand that both of these would require some form of an override. <clears throat> you should be asking the people behind you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> likely to require everything. an override. And they, the answer right now would be. I haven't got to that point yet. I would guess. So when we left, we left our, our Monday uh, full request budget. All the departments, including the original ask, which was a hundred ninety-three thousand dollar increase from the elementary school, the gap, including the override from last year and new growth and two and a half, was one hundred ninety thousand and change. Right. If you if you jump from the scenario that was last week's elementary school budget, scenario one. So this scenario one would add the difference between 193 and 303. And all that does is just push it towards that. It adds that much more to the existing gap of $190,000. Same with 256. Okay. But again, it's just as, as uh, David has pointed out, this is uh, the most it's not the happiest part of the year. However, it's, it's why we're paid the ridiculous sum we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you missed one meeting. Uh, one one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you.
Officially close the hearing. Okay, so what's that? It's seven fifty-five. Um, we got a bunch more business to do, and I don't know if the plan is to vote on a budget this evening. But I was, I don't know what the chairman's pleasure. Just in terms of letting you all know what we're doing, uh, Mr. Chairman, do you have a sense of whether we will vote on a budget tonight? I was assuming that we were. Their vote approval of an FY20 budget on the agenda. <clears throat> I mean, is there so is I mean, there room to? Well, so my thought on that is, is, I mean, so we built that scenario one mm -hmm. with the idea that we knew we're talking about an overlay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so everything gets thrown into that into that kitchen sink there, mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to have to come back again. Right. You know, in tying in with that is, you know, we're trying to project in what next year looks like. You know, we've done some so some preliminary looking at that, but I mean, I hear tonight that the school can't grow larger than eighty thousand dollars a year. Yet the last three years, we're over a hundred thousand dollars in growth. Mm -hmm. So. We're outspending our allowance every time we go to our parents for the money. Mm -hmm. But and we're told we're not supposed to, but we're, I don't, I don't know how you move back to that number based just on, on areas that, while we control collective bargaining, it's done with all four, four towns. And you know, those, those numbers are, you know, are what they are and they are where they're gonna be when we get there. And you know, two and a, you know, Two percent or two and a half percent, which is some of those back numbers, is not. You know, yeah, I, it's not unheard of. But if you say, well, let's go for, you know, one of the versions of scenario two, okay, where we are, um, you know, possibly saying, well, gee, let's figure out a way to get through this coming year without the extra kindergarten, with only one kindergarten, okay, and you know, what's the odds of making it through six years with that age group? Okay, with not having to go to a second teacher, okay, and then, boom. Well, you know, why didn't you just build it into the system and then, you know, take your, pull in six or eight school choice kids and you know that helps at least, you know, get you a little better numbers on the school choice and, you know, that's a more sustainable plan, but it costs a little more up front. And and really, we need that the size the extra classes as in the number of years. You know, we all know it's more important than right. right. I mean, it varies, obviously. Right. Know, but that's the, it, it's a shame there wasn't more flexibility in being able, because of the way that goes up and down, it would be nice to have a little more flexibility with respect to staffing to be able to shift it around a little easier because I suspect that's a challenge. That'd be my hunch, because you know, you know what I mean. You've got where it kind of goes up and down like this. You know, I think it's quite remarkable that we have right now a sixth grade class of twenty, a fifth grade class of basically forty, a fourth grade class of basically twenty. I mean, talk about trying to run an efficient. It may be weird because you've got these, you know, either one grade or two grades, and you've got to deal with it when they age out. Okay, but in the meantime, you are getting as much efficiency as you can into a system that is not generally looked at for efficiency because you're trying to get optimum class sizes. Okay, now a parent would say, well, gee, the optimum class size is about 10. Okay, but we can't be at that. We're not a private, we're not a private school. <laughs> My grandma's living room was 10, it was very Yeah, and I had a fellow when I was on the finance committee, I remember Jake uh, Yemens, and he said, I, when I went to school, there were 60 in my class and it was good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I think that one of the reasons that we've um, we've actually managed with the school choice, whatever you want to say about how we responsibly or irresponsibly it's ended up being spent, we've managed to take it in in a way that hasn't put additional demands on the school. Okay, so that even though you're not getting that much money, it's been able to be used as to supplement rather than just to hire more teachers or something. The difference between scenario one and scenario two sounds like a piece of headcount. 
right? If you look at them, there's the psychological value of something being greater than three and the psychological value of something being greater than two. If, if, if the committee's position is to, is to make an honest recommendation that can, can even out that trajectory, then I would suggest if you're, if you're motivated for a really heavy lift, I, I, wouldn't, I, would, I would just go for it. Right? For $50,000, why? It's all we're talking about. So you mean just basically you're saying just go for scenario one? Uh, if, 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 so the difference, the mechanism is identical between scenario one and scenario two. Right. Identical mechanism. Right. right? You're either going to get it or you're not. Right. So, so why, why, we've heard you know, more than once, you know, is there a magic number? Probably not a magic number, right? But I can, I can assure you it won't be phrased in such a way that it will be for general government, general operations. Be, be assured of that. So it will be, be or it, won't be? It will not be. It will be for the elementary school. So that's important to bear in mind as well. Okay. So the, the lifting, the lifting um, will be coming from this building. We're lifting. Right? <laughs> the, I mean, the only the thing I would say this is even, again, even option one, I don't, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that okay. that if we're thinking of what that number should be mm -hmm. for, for an override, if it, uh, would be I would say more than what option number one um, implies because we don't because we don't want to be going into in a position where we're asking for that again no, the right. subsequent year or you and then suspect you wouldn't may not even entertain it so. So else not to appropriate something you don't have an expense for. So bear that in mind. Yeah. No, but yeah. but the the option one already has uh, I wouldn't say eighty k worth of. Free, there was an option zero implied in option one. I, I, that's why I said. Because one. because the um right the, the, again the school choice mm -hmm. has uh, money that's supporting the mm -hmm. and it's and it's at a at a. So no, yeah. So but I guess how do we so how do we fix this moving forward? And I, I started this conversation right at the transition, so I wasn't sure if you heard this part, but the statement was made that you cannot grow, based on the current growth of the town, any larger than $80,000 a year. Yet our last three budgets were over $100,000. <coughs> so we've been breaking that rule year and after year. How do we, in, in projecting ahead, you know, we looking ahead next year, the real rough numbers was around a 4% increase will probably be the 21 budget, which is over $100,000, because $26,000 is each percentage of our current budget. So we can't, we can't seem to play by the rules that are set. Do we need to talk about, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, we're, the rules are, nobody's following the rules because the rules aren't, you know, I don't want to say they're not being enforced, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, because it, we're 20,000 or $25,000 over each year of where we really, the town really <coughs> wants us to be, but we can't be there. And I want to get in the same, yeah. you know what I mean? I want a budget that goes through that's like, yeah, that's exactly what we expected and that's exactly what we want to spend. The, the catalyst for the override last year to, to do a general government override is recognizing the elementary school is part of the general government budget, right? right. It's not an assessed value, it's straight inside the budget. And we're, our goal was to be able to build in that additional $200,000 of levy limit and that percentage going forward would move that 80 to 88 to 92 to so it moves as right. we would expect your as all department as much many departments growth actually goes so that was the reset last year that was our effort yeah I, I, to, oh, go ahead um to add to that, it, you know we talked here about if cost of living rises and inflation whatever then maybe you do have a periodic sort of leap year ish i mean you need an override from time to time to rebalance the, the amount of headlights but also the town's not the only source of funding you know and again well and to answer your other question you know you've been going over each year well that's pretty simple you've got a pie i'm going to put it down in front of you if you take a bigger piece you get a smaller piece but the override the other thing with the override is if it does if we were to pass one then that number that we're talking about is a bigger number Right, but, but, I, but then the percentage. I, and I, and I, and I understood. I understand everything that's being said here. It's just when I talk, when we talk about, you know, working 
tighter within the budget and in projecting within the budget because you know looking through you know I went through the old budgets the old budget notes it was written in, in each of the budget notes that we cannot sustain ourselves on school choice and so you know it's so I mean everybody kind of knew it and we were offsetting it as a revenue source and then you know it wasn't you know, just in budget it, notes it was in town meeting it was right in, and so I guess the question is that we're gonna have to work together out of it and I, that's why while we could propose a budget tonight I mean, I want it to be within, because there's, there are so many moving parts. You know, we, we take, you know, let's use the one example is the technology thing. Do we pull that out? Do you use it in a warrant? Do we put it in there because it's part of the budget moving forward? And, and, and it's one of those things, we threw it all in because I went with the mentality that you said there at the beginning there. If you're going to go for an override, we better put it all in because we're not going to come back anytime. Sure. We better not come back anytime, sure. <laughs> Let's it, rephrase it that way. It begs, it begs the question about that particular line where I put in those public hearing is closed. Is it, is it a recurring expense on an annualized basis? Right. It, is it? If it's not, it shouldn't be in the budget. Right. My right. understanding it was, should, was, a, was it was, but. Yeah, it, it, it is a recurring expense. Okay. Right. So this year we had um, said that that money was going to update the computer lab. There's the technology all across, across the building. So if it's yep. a technology line and it's right. legit, then, then you just keep it in. Yeah. Right. right. That was, but so I was. I, mean, I just was looking for, you know, the guidance on that. Oh, so I mean, I, I don't know. That's why. And, and then the, the question is, if you're, if we're going to need another teacher in two years, yeah. you know, you know, where's that coming from? Where's you know, where's that coming? You know, so that, you know, how far, that's, that's and how far can we project ahead? It's before it gets very gray. Over <laughs> a year, just over one year ahead, it gets very gray within school funding between. All the moving parts, which makes it so hard for us to create a budget in the middle of a year. I mean, it's, you know, the towns have the same problem. I understand that. So, all right. Hey. Else? Now, can I just ask one question? You said um, that based on last week's budget, budget with school, the town was. Um, the difference between our available revenues and the all ask budget, as was last Monday, we were in a deficit of 190000 and of over $190,000. And that's what, so it's almost like. Anything that we come in at this point is going to put the town. The one, the one ninety three put us over. By about one hundred ninety. Surprise. Right. <laughs> so we're starting like so. Even if we come in and ask like ten, right. we're going to be like ten. Okay. So even even with and Peter summed it up really well. Again, this is the all ask budget, right? Yeah. There's 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 things in there that are not going to be there when we get to week three. Right. That said, it's important to recognize the work that the department heads, boards, and committees put in to say, you know, here's what we need to do the best we can possibly do uh, for the residents of the town. Right. And we put on our Solomon hats. And as, as I said in one of our meetings uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, there's eight inches separates a noose from a halo. It depends on the year. Okay. <laughs> right? I always have a t shirt. <laughs> Uh, one quick, one last question. Um, <laughs> nice try. Do you, is there any, <laughs> I'm going to keep, I want to, I want to ask this. Back away slowly. Is there, is there, is there a scenario where we, we vote something and then you would come back at, you know, in the next week or two or three and say, Jesus, you know, if you could lower that budget by 20, we put in scenario one, you said, Jesus, if you could lower that budget by 20,000, then it would sort of make whatever possible. Yep. Okay. We've had, we've had budget, budget discussions with the elementary school and department has right at the town meeting floor. Okay, so I just wanted to... So I, whatever I, vote you take tonight is <laughs> your, your position in the discussion. Yeah. Right. Okay, I, I thought that was the case, but I just wanted I'm to make not, clear. I'm actually glad Appreciate you bring it up because this isn't... Yeah. It, it, does, yeah. it doesn't end with tonight's vote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a good constructive dialogue and, right. and it's, it's, your, it's your, your placeholder. This right. is where we're going to start. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Have a good dinner. Okay, thanks, folks. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you. No, no, you can stick to around. I just I meant to the people who are walking out. I'm not thanking you <laughs> for sticking around. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion to approve the minutes of the meetings of uh, uh, February 27th and also March 11th? 
One was included in your packet, the other I sent out by email a few days ago was the meeting we had concurrent with the selectman meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Financial statements signed warrants. Yeah, um, the warrants are going around. There are nine warrants in total for $60,509.66. Um, coming out of the general fund, the after school program, grant, grant um, special education revolving activity fund, school lunch, and uh, some insurance recovery. So that's what's there. <clears throat> um, results of operations. Um, I am still working on trying to project to the end of the year. I haven't quite gotten there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there have been some right. other things that have uh, recorded me from oh, getting yeah. that, that, task, <coughs> that task done. Um, but um, I will have that done for you for April so that uh, you have a good handle on going into the fourth quarter about where, where you stand. Um, just some minor adjustments uh, made to the budget um, in the area of the school committee. Um, putting in some money for um, contracted services because there was not anything budgeted for your membership with the collaborative. So we took it out of uh, supplies and put it into that contracted services. And then um, the um, custodial budget where we have that extra time, that 5000 um, there's been some extra costs for copiers. And so we've moved that out of that line and into uh, copiers to cover some anticipated overages in that line. So those are two big moving parts at this particular point in time. But uh, I guess I... Um, so I don't know if you or <coughs> uh, Ben or uh, to the, the, the freeze you're talking about now to, to uh, keep us in compliance right. with the um, school choice balance. Um, what has to happen with all of this is that because we are going between funds, it's a little more complicated to do it within the accounting software. I get it in principle, but I've never done it in Infinite Visions, so um, I'm okay. working on how to get that moved around. And are there like implications that uh, for for the school in terms of that are? are uh, we, we can I can show you the the, the accounts that you for. We didn't present those at the last meeting. Probably. How do we think Does, about them? I, either, either is, yeah. I, yeah, I think I've been dumping them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ben, ben identified about $49,000 worth of um, funds that he's not, unless it's a dire emergency, Gun, okay. releasing. And okay. we've looked at about 30000 of that to go in to offset the, the school choice dilemma. So okay. right. leaving about 19000 um, okay. For any kind of emergencies that should arise. Okay. Um, so that's uh, pretty much kind of where we're at with all of that at this particular point in time. So, so it's just the mechanics of getting some of those between fund transfers right. done. And once I get my little tutorial, I'll be good to go and we'll make those mm -hmm. uh, decisions. Basically, you have to look at. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. you can go the reach line, but it's yeah. yeah. I mean, unless the chair yeah. wants to go the reach okay. line, but it's. He's taking parts of certain lines. Yep. You know, I mean, read a few just to, well, Ben, read a few just to get that. <coughs> principal's office advertising, yep. principal's office professional development, supplies and materials from the principal's office, um, instructional materials, hardware devices, which was the um, computers. That was the big one that for, for 18,000. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. So I mean, we, if the computers is the, Big one. The is big the lion's share. Everything else yeah. is 500 here, maybe yeah. a thousand there. Right. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that one in the holding off on buying instructional software, I would say was another significant one. Um, yep. You know, that, that would affect actually, that does affect programming. The other ones are, again, mm -hmm. advertising and. Okay. And that's for this year. Right. So not not necessarily going into next year, depending on how, how this budget goes, obviously. Right. right. So again, taking now that 30,000, yep. now that we've identified yep. that number and yep. fusing that into the projections right. uh, along with the transfers, that's um, okay. you know, the next steps. Um, oh, sorry. Just a question. I sent an email to Darius uh, not long ago, a copy to you about the, with the school lunch of finances. Yes. 
and have and, and it seemed that the problem was that the claims for reimbursement from the feds and the state were not getting submitted because the town wasn't getting the money. Have you had a chance to look into that? And I have, and um, I had a brief conversation with the food to service director yesterday. She and I were supposed to meet today, but she got hung up, so I will um, make sure that either Mark touches base with her, he's here the next couple of days, or um, I'll give her a call. Um, but evidently there was an issue with an audit with a former school food service director that needs to be cleaned up and that she's working on that and they're withholding the funds until that audit is cleaned up. So um, I don't know a whole lot more detail about it than that. So um, obviously that's something I need to chase down. Because basically there have been no funds received by the town since March of last year. And then there was, however, a... Uh, uh, a fund transfer in the process of being entered on the town's books that would have covered up for the federal part would have covered up through uh, the month of uh, September mm -hmm. but that still leaves about so that takes care of like about five months and so that gets us back in the black but there's still like from uh, October to right and so I just need to touch base with her and get the details about that but that was the conversation we had in passing yesterday okay because it would be I don't particularly care <coughs> I don't particularly care about what caused it, I just care about getting it fixed. Yeah, absolutely, and so that's what she's working on. So I, I know obviously we want to from the business office assist her with that process. Right, and then, and then phase two of my sort of question is, um, my, uh, my, my look at all the numbers indicates that we should be having a positive balance in there, something between 20 and 30,000, mm -hmm. which would allow uh, doing the food service director's salary, in not case. only next year, but also the current year. Right, which would, again, relieve some pressure. Exactly. I mean, it's not big numbers, but right. everything helps. Right. So, so that's, that's again, I just, just so that gets followed up sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Yeah. Thank you, that's all I just received. On to uh, public comment, if there is any. I know we had the hearing already. I figure everybody's talked out. <laughs> Good. All right. Unfinished business. Discussion items. Proposed FY20 budget. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, school committee approve uh, the budget represented by scenario one. Make this, put this up, at least get a motion on the floor for discussion. Yeah. So make the motion that we, the motion we approve scenario one as presented by the so uh, that's a number doctor. of two million nine hundred six thousand twenty-six dollars. Okay, my minutes probably uh, that. Second, I'll second, second that. Yep. Get those discussion second. second. All right. So let's open the discussion. I guess since I made the motion, I'll just speak to it. I think that uh, that last little bit of discussion with Scott indicated that. Uh, um, we're not losing anything by submitting that. You know, we're not losing, we're not losing uh, brownie points for for not playing along with a lower number or something like that. We're basically putting this in and saying this is what we need. And I don't see a reason, I don't see a reason uh, to go to a lumber, lower number. And actually, I don't see a reason to go to a lumber, lower number even, even you know, as we proceed through to an eventual override vote because I think this is, you need a number like this in order not to be just deep in the hole next year. Uh, that's what makes me think we should present a higher number. <laughs> if, we're, if we're being honest about, um, uh, no, honest isn't the right word, we're being honest, we're being totally open in, with the numbers. Uh, if, if we don't want to be up against it next year uh, in terms of what we think you know, would be our, you know, kind of like what we think the school should be operating on, then I think we need to move more money now out of school choice. And whether that we do that, and I don't know that that can be done um, outside of what we submit to, as the budget. I think it has to be within our budget. I don't think, you know, we, we could say to them, well, we're submitting this, but, you know, that's what I was kind of basically throwing out there to Scott that like I think another hundred thousand should go on to get stuff off of choice and he seemed to be saying well you got to do it through your budget mm -hmm. like because we can't just we can't put it they uh, can't put it in there but of course you know it's we control what goes out what gets spent out of school choice and so <clears throat> you 
know, our record's not the best in terms of being a good, uh, good fiduciary of, of that because it's, you know, my problem with having, I mean, I want to have some surplus, but the problem is it's then, I mean, I sort of get worried. I realize why you're doing it, but I get worried when I see stuff like, you know, we've been basically every time we need another tutor for the English ESL program, it's like, where you go? Because it's not in the budget. You go over to, you know, tap the school choice again. And while that's... But, that's, but that, I think that's what, well, I think... And you say that's what it's, what it's there should for. Give, right, and right now we don't have the flexibility to do that. But the problem uh, is, the problem is that the moment you start doing that and you start knocking that reserve number down, it doesn't build up automatically. You no, know, we don't have an E and D account that you know sort of self replenishes or something. But what happened to us is isn't that we did that. What happened to us is we were funding our our as we're you know still doing our classroom our basic our core kind of classroom instructors and instructional assistants out of, you know, to some substantial proportion out of school choice. That's what we should not be, we should be trying to avoid. And then if we need, we need another tutor in a situation, you know, and, and that, you know, clear, then we've got that flexibility from school choice. We, we have, you know, in a year we don't need that, but we want to put some money towards a playground that's falling, you know, falling apart. Um, you know, we can do that with the school choice money. Um, but if we're, we, we continue to fund teachers and instructional assistants out of school choice and, you know, and we run, you know, we run to where we're in the negative. Now, now we, are, we are cutting those as opposed to saying, and again, I, I feel like, you know, again, it's one thing what, what passes out in the town, but I mean, it was from, from the finance committee, from the select board, like, you know, let's put it into the budget not have it, uh, you know, and, and, and pull more out of school choice. And, and again, if, if, if we go, if they go through their process and, and whatever else and say, we, have, we don't have a stomach for that number, then we pass a number that's, then we come back in here and pass a number that's lower. But I'd rather go and say, this is what I think is, you know, more responsible going forward without being back here, going through the same discussion a, a year or two from now. And I won't be on the con committee with them probably, but I'll yeah. still care. <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, I, I understand the, the question philosophically. I, I want to get back to uh, this year, we, we not only had no headlights in terms of there was no money in reserve, uh, but we also got hit with a, a few you know, perfect storm issues mm -hmm. all at once. It's mirrors. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, what I don't necessarily want to do is put forward a budget that plans for a, a perfect storm next. So, but, but it, right, but it isn't. I mean, it, our, what we end at, mm -hmm. our balance at the end of next year in school yeah. choice will be a couple thousand yeah, $2, dollars. Two thousand which is not. Which is, so which you, is exactly. So do you take yeah. one teacher's salary and put her on to the, you put her on to the, or he onto the budget local, local thank you for looking yeah. for words here put it on the local that's about forty seven thousand dollars and then that puts you at that gives you that cushion because right now you are correct if we put this budget forward over right pass everybody's supporting great um choice a, a choice family of three decides to move to california because they love the school but you know they go to california we are right. now in the hole starting off the year in, with no special ed, we we're down, you know, thirteen thousand dollars. We only have about two. Yeah, you're sunk. Right. So you're you're right. starting off the year there. <laughs> and so just talking about what you know we did in, in Wheatley is in the same pool. Mm -hmm. They got down to the point where they they were going to make cuts in order to have a revenue of a, a carryover of fifty thousand dollars, so they wouldn't have this happen. And their budget is slightly smaller than some ones. You know, just population mm -hmm. size wise, mm -hmm. but they were this, they're at the same point where they they yeah. spent down, and then they were putting stuff over into local, and we're going to have to. But yeah. their their towns are different financial station. The numbers are a little bit different. They yeah. didn't have these little these side right. things, going things going on. So um, they're actually just going to put more money into it to, to try to get that reserve up over the next two years over fifty thousand dollars. So it's the same it's the same kind of game that's being played. In the other communities as well of having that excess, so it is a it is a question. You put that in because if the family does move and we're down twenty thousand dollars, then we're going to be cutting starting off the year the very budget that everybody thought they you know were going to override this. Is you know, and 
Yeah, I mean, so we have that 50 and, um, and then, I mean, it's 210,000 in structural assistance is being funded out of choice. Um, you know, again, if we have a substantial, you know, reduction, then are we prepared to make those cuts in instructional assistance or whatever else would yeah, I don't think this happening? I, I, I'm not sure how relevant this is, but I don't think it matters what we're funding out of school choice. I think it matters how much we're funding out of school choice. Well, okay, because okay. whether you're funding, just for example, use a simple thing, a teacher or two instructional assistants or uh, all the custodians, okay? It's still, you're basically just transferring a certain amount of money adding on to the regular school operating budget. Okay, and, and as a, exactly who you peg to that account, that amount of money, to me it's sort of cosmetics, or maybe, you know, you got to, but it doesn't really change the dollars any. I would like to see it more, because I'm looking at, I didn't see the 210. Yeah. It's teacher salaries, kindergarten teacher salaries, instructional aid salaries, sped instructional aid salaries, mm -hmm and then stipends. And the two that jump out at me is, you gotta get teacher salaries and kindergarten teacher salaries off of school choice. The IA, SPED IA, stipends, those are all almost extra services. The basics, so the first thing for me would be the, the kindergarten teacher salary of 47,977. That's almost what you were saying, with one salary, it should just move off of there. Yeah. Um, you can do that, right? I can hit that button. I would actually- you can move that off and move something else on. I wouldn't want to move anything onto the school choice. So you want to just create a... I want to get as much off of there as possible. I think that we've been kind of nickel and diming trying to do that over the last couple of years. We just never... What it's going to take, and we've been thinking of this for a while, it's going to take a significant investment from the town to a one-time investment to get all that stuff off. And then we have to be very um, attuned to how we use that money. I just... I just I if struggle you with were to take that one teacher salary and put it back into the local budget, it would mm -hmm. leave you with that fifty thousand dollar cushion. Mm -hmm. That's what it would do to mitigate against a dip. But then, but then we're in the same boat going into the 2021-2022 school year, where we have to add another teacher as. As the selectmen were saying, there's there's not enough money coming in to offset just the normal operational costs that we have in the building with just salary increases. Just regular. So right. I mean, we're, we're looking at you know a a assuming we're not adding any positions and it's just staying as is. We're looking at a ten probably a twenty year period of all right, you know now we're at a hundred thousand for the school. Salaries, ninety thousand. We're going to take ten thousand off of school choice this year, and it's just it's going to take a long time. And so that's why it does need to be, you know, a little bit more of a bump. And the other number is the one forty-seven. I don't know if what page are you? I'm just looking right at the school choice page six, I think. The budget expenses. Yeah, but if you look down at the bottom, the, the teachers, the kindergarten teacher is the only one that's left moving that's forward to F Y ten. Okay. We've already accounted for that. Okay. So I mean, if you took that forty-seven nine seventy-seven off, you would come out at about a fifty thousand dollar surplus moving forward which would be the bare bones minimum. I would say you would <laughs> 2,000 is the bare bones minimum. Yeah, uh, they, uh, that's, that's really not a viable number, to be, to be very honest. Yeah. Sure, if you want to increase that number, you got two ways of doing it. One is to cut something out of the budget, but leave the same request, and therefore, that whatever you cut to the school choice reserve projected at the end of the year, or you got to raise the total ask without changing any items in the budget. So you then create, uh, you know, rep create revenue that can be transferred into there. Can I ask? 
uh, with that budgeting question, to the budgeting point about they can't, um, they can't appropriate more than they're gonna, than they're budgeted for, can't raise whatever more than they're budgeting for. But with, with an uh, override, does that apply to the override or is the override, could the override be for an amount that they, but they may not, it raises the threshold, right? It doesn't mean that they actually. You basically present raise. a, the, the way it's, it's executed is you, uh, you have a, uh, a motion at town meeting, the one that deals with the budget, and you say, and you have the numbers in there, and the numbers in, uh, would be reflecting of the budget uh, as if the override is passed, okay? And then there's just the phrase in there, contingent on the passage of a two and a half, prop two and a half override. Okay? But the budget has to match. But the budget is already, if the override, so the budget is set under the presumption that the override will pass, and so if the override does pass, I understand. Yeah. You don't go back to town meeting. I get okay. that part. I guess what I'm asking is, could the override be for more that, Are you than for one time correction that, than then, was budgeted? But that doesn't necessarily sure. get the override. The override is set by the selectmen. They could set. They could sit there and they could take this budget here. Just you know, scenario one here that calls for <laughs> uh, the extra money. And they could say. <laughs> Gee, you know that's fine, and here's what we need to support that. But we ought to—we're going to tack another hundred on that, so that uh, we're not back here. Oh, uh, when we, you know, for next year, then we'll have an extra hundred thousand that we're just—you uh, know—the pie has gotten that much bigger. Peter, Doug, I just want to make sure that I understand where you're, where you're going with this and, yeah. and the mechanisms behind it. Doug, are you thinking about a one-time, like a step change of one size, but then also a one-time? Spike I'm thinking, that. Uh, what I'm saying is whether we, we can either put, build it into the budget mm -hmm. uh, that we, we ask them yep. to take, uh, or we could say, well, you know, right now we could do the 303 plus the 47 that gives us that ending balance of 50. But, you know, we would urge you to consider when you're thinking about an override number to put more on that because, you know, we know we've got two years from now, another classroom coming. Um, and we, we don't want to be in a position of coming back to you with a budget that can't be sustained within the current, um, you know, it could be about a like total, total, you know, taxable levy. It mm -hmm. could be a harder sell yeah. if you don't have a reason to raise the money. Exactly. Right. Within that's the, that current year, that's the usual, politically speaking. That's the usual problem. Right, and I, and I guess that, yeah. right, so either we, do it now, and we've and then that's where I'm saying. Well, we <laughs> we could do another, you know all kinds of scenarios. We could go to the 303. We could go to the 350 ish. We could go to 400, knowing what's coming in two years, and you know, um, or we could do the 350, saying but asking them to do 400. But when again to that point, it's a pretty simple story. This is what we need this year, and we know two years from now what we've got coming, and that's why, you know, it's not in our school budget this year, but we know, we, you know, we don't want to be back here two years from now. Um, and, I mean, no, no, we don't know. With the town population thing could change and blah, blah, blah. So, okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you want to recognize this. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody mentioning the, um, the Promise Act and fund our future, and we certainly don't want to count any chickens before they're hatched, but there could be more state funding yeah. for next year. Yeah. Uh, there, there's even a figure attached to it already. Like, like 139,000 for Sunderland. Hmm. Split between, you know, K-12. So, okay. But well, that changes things. That would change things for, for sure. I mean, that's part of, part of what got us through, I don't go through it before, but I guess, but you know, part of what would have got us through after FY09 was that the following year there was federal grant money that came in for a couple of years that also, between what people did fundraising, um, you know, all kinds of incredible act action, and that federal grant money, which then helps turn the tide of what was happening with choice, then we started going into the choice money the way we've, we've been. So it was a combination of things. That, I didn't, I didn't know about this, but the federal, you know, I don't think there's a federal grant uh, about to come that, um, to us uh, that's gone. As a matter of fact, the president's initial budget has a 10% increase in all entitlement funding to education. 10% so decrease? De decrease. Decrease, yeah. yeah. Decrease, sorry. So, yeah. Um, so, and 
That's, what, that's, I'm what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do <coughs> with here. I, 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 I. That's why some things got put on choice to begin with, because they were on a grant, and the grant went away. Correct. And we were stuck. What we're do, choice. Yeah. 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 Well, so, I mean, yeah, that's so I'll throw the recommendation out there that you increase it by removing all teachers off of, yeah. by doing, by removing that kindergarten right. teachers off and making the number 350,000, you are making the budget solvent moving forward by getting off of choice for teaching positions. And then it gives you a little wiggle room going into next year with the budget moving forward, you have $100,000 of cuts already going into this budget. So it's not like, it's not like you're putting everything back on there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also saying that we're not going to play that close to the line with school choice. Um, so that we end up in it. Because if you don't put that number, if you don't request that number on, yeah, and we lose, let's say we lose that because of the three person family moves to California again. Right, yeah. People are going to say, what, what were you guys thinking? Where, were you, where was your foresight? Right. You know, there. Uh, if the if the select board says you know you're asking for too much you're gonna have to and they bring it back to us to adjust at least the initial ask is what right is, it, is is what they said from the very beginning was you better ask what you really need instead of trying to come yeah. to cutting down so that people have a clear understanding of what you really need. yeah and and you know and I would just say like it, <laughs> it kind of comes like gets put on this the school committee at times that like we you know we haven't been asking for this and how come it's just like, now it's come to this crisis, which, come on, I mean, yeah, we've, been, yeah. we've been telling this story for years, we've been saying what we need, um, you know, and, and there is a political, you know, reality of what will pass in a given year, um, and so then, you know, we, we deal with that hand that ultimately gets handed to us, but it's not like, I mean, not like I, I, we didn't, even without getting some of these um, surprises this year, you know, it's not like, we, um, we didn't think that yeah. uh, a bigger number of last year would have been so would, have, would have been a better number. Scenario more realistic. Anyway, sorry. Scenario one gets us uh, through the year, and the headlights are still off uh, because we only have two K in reserve. And adding the teacher salary back on gets us through the year, and it puts the headlights back on. And that's the the incremental. I think it's important to understand that what we're saying in front of the camera is that it's not a reserve, it's a bank account which somebody else has a credit, has a card to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, understand so what It's not like, it's not, like, yeah. it's not E and D. It's, it's, well, yeah. we have the, it's a revenue source that, it's a revenue source that can go up and down given this, the given the year. Right, but if we go and see what would concern me about that is whether we have the discipline not to use that money unless it really is an emergency and it's not just oh we need another aid okay we can grab it there because there's money sitting there right. because then you you do that for something that's not really right. emergency and you've just shot yourself in the foot I, I, let's, yeah let's, let's and so if we don't have a if we don't have a commitment to if i'm not doing that i don't know what i'm looking for here i'm just saying it's you know if i'm sitting on the other side of the table I think that commitment, honestly, the commitment to the floor, I mean, that, like, uh, like if 50,000 is the number, I mean, we did project to go below that this year, but, I mean, that was the, that was the first time we went below. What do you think in terms year? of being able to pass it? I asked Joe Comerford at a town hall in January about it. She... No, I don't mean a statement. I mean about passing oh. over with a, oh. with, a, with a bigger number that included putting some putting 50 grand in reserve for school choice. I mean, I'm scared about it, but um, we're, th there is a group of parents who are pulling out all the stops that we know of for, to convince voters to, come, to go and vote for an override on May 4th. Do you think that would make any particular difference? $50,000? No. I don't think it will make a difference. I, I, it might drive up people, it might drive up the number of people who get themselves to the polls that day to vote no. Mm -hmm. It's possible. 
but the weather that day could also affect it. So. Yeah. You never know. You never know until you count the votes, and then it's like there's nothing you can do. I yep. And I also think that um, this, uh, our select board has indicated that they like formulaic approaches, and I think one of the ideas is not funding teacher salaries, regular teacher salaries with school choice mm -hmm. should be like a, a basically a formula going forward. Mm -hmm. That being said, this is what the budget is going to have to come out to. Um, on the other side, if it doesn't pass, we we're looking at those numbers and it was interesting with school, just looked at it, the school population, how it is not that much higher now than it was in 2009, but the reason is immediately after 2009, it plummeted yeah. down to about 150, and that's what's going to happen if the override fails. Yeah, and that will cost the town money, yeah. even more so. So I think that we, and, th and this is a starting point. This is so I, I think I would recommend this is what we put forward. So, so hold on, you recommending that we do 350? 350. Give us an exact. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. That's why you have a link to work with. So, the budget you would be looking to amend the motion on the floor would be two million nine hundred fifty-four thousand and three dollars, a difference of three hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred seventy-one dollars, and a percent increase of thirteen point four nine. So, uh, can you do that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. The total local budget you would be voting would be two million nine hundred fifty four thousand and three dollars. I gotta write that mm -hmm. down, hang on. Sorry, <laughs> throwing a lot of numbers ahead. Yep. <clears throat> Say that again. Sure. Two million nine fifty four zero zero three. Percentage increase. Percentage increase thirteen point four nine. And that essentially is scenario one with uh, teacher uh, added to the town supported budget and therefore <clears throat> not being uh, not using school choice money to pay for it. To pay for any teachers at this point. So right. the dollar difference, the increase is three hundred fifty one thousand one hundred seventy one dollars. Three fifty one one seventy one and the amount for that teacher was forty seven nine seventy seven. Thank you. Is that a friendly amendment, Peter? Um, I think it. Well, I haven't. I don't know what Greg and Maisie think, so I don't know if there's. You know, we're split on that or not. So I don't know if they yeah, have. A, good, good question. I think we move it. Which one? To, we move the teacher salary onto the local budget. Uh, and we still have people's salaries on there, even if we do that. Got to be. You're going to have to have salaries on there because salaries is most of what's in our budget, right. Right. one way or another. Yeah, the only way I would move scenario one without the teacher on there is if the pros at the table said, "No, no, the, there's some get well stuff, and we expect, you know, a two K." Next year, but maybe a 52k the year after that, and it doesn't sound. I don't like see it. anything like that. And, and the other, I mean, and and the other compounding factor with school choice is the fact that when you look at Western Massachusetts, school age populations are dropping right. in Hampshire County and in Franklin County. They have been for years, and that trend is still continuing <coughs> on. Um, so you got less to draw on from the overall pool. As I've also point. wondered what's. I mean, because. <laughs> Euro Montague, a lot of our choice comes from there, right. and they've got a new school there, right? My, my, no, they didn't get a new no, school. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, the, huh? Yeah, no, it's brutal for them. It's yeah, the yeah, the the, <laughs> un, the underbelly of as, the school as to the uh, yeah, see what you said. I think yeah. we haven't heard. Yeah. May I suggest that we actually just you make an amendment to my motion yeah. so that that way it shows that what was one presented and mm -hmm. then the discussion about so you know the point therefore I can put in about the discussion about raising it 
you know, moving the one teacher and and, and yeah. putting the money back in school choice. Yeah. So I got. Yeah. So. So we need a second for Doug's motion. Sure. Craig. Why not? Okay. So. In favor. You want to? This is on the amendment, right? Yeah. yeah, on the amendment, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't think we. We got to vote on the amendment for yeah. unless there's more discussion. <coughs> vote on the amendment. Okay. All in favor. Yeah, I vote. All right. And then we got to vote on the motion. Yeah. As amended. As amended. Right. All in favor. So we will edit the document mm -hmm. to reflect such, and especially to make sure things mm -hmm. just going to go through it one time, Judy, with yeah. that cover sheet. Mm -hmm. yep. We will email it all to you. Mm -hmm. okay. And you, Ben, you can have a copy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> pause. I'm um, pausing. With the kindergarten, yeah, okay. second kindergarten classroom back into the budget, that means we do need an increase of art. So in what we presented, um, yeah, are we too late on that? We haven't left yet. We still have a quorum. We have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's all right. No better. Better to figure that now. Yeah. Than right. After we've walked yeah. away. For yeah. Sure. Sorry, it was voting is easy. Forty seconds late on that. And so, just, just to, as long as that's the paint is still fresh, uh, if we're looking at two kindergartens, does that open also some choice that offsets, or, or is that not? Part it of does. This? So it does. But so <coughs> this turns into the another. So the game of waiting for all the different legislature to pass and that kind of thing, and we also have to play the game of. We have students that are, families that are waiting for acceptance letters on school choice. Mm -hmm. If we open up to two kindergartens, at some point we have to make a decision that then we give the nod to notify those families that we're mm -hmm. going with two kindergartners and garden, uh, classes rather, and so those seven families that applied would be oh. accepted in. Yeah. And so you're going to get some revenue for that, but you also have to look at your exiting sixth grade class. Yeah, we have three it, in the sixth grade. Three. So. You know, so you know everything outside of okay. one more, so to speak, is going to help. Is going to be on the positive side, but Plus just in, uh, and you're going to eventually you're going to start selecting more school choice. But school choice is going to have to let us know they're coming. Okay. Right, they've applied. So, that doesn't necessarily mean they're coming. Right, but and, I mean, and we won't know necessarily right. when you have to send out that you're opening. Right, and we won't necessarily have had the override pass yeah. or not pass. Right, and the charter sheet will never reflect this. What will happen is the December adjustment right. would reflect it next year and then moving forward, and it increases. Right. Okay. So you won't see it in, in see any it. version of the state budget at this point. Yeah. It would be a December Fair adjustment. Enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, with the with town meeting and such, I mean, it will be early May. You would know. I mean, that is about what the timeline is right now. Okay. So, right, Ben? Well, uh, mm -hmm. school committee, you'll approve school choice openings in April meeting. Mm -hmm. April 4th, right? Is that what our meeting is? Yeah. yeah, I mean, legally you'll be indicating whether or not you're a school choice school, and then the actual amount of slots is not legally set by school committee. It's just been advisory of school committee. As they look for class size, with sure. Choice. But then, are we sending out the acceptance letters immediately after the April fourth meeting? That's what. I'm, that's that my yeah. conversation yeah. point. Yeah. Is what is the timeline? Right. And I think to be fair to families, we probably would wait until after the overall vote. Right? I mean, realistically, if if there's twenty two resident kindergartners. I mean, if we were in some bad situation, I mean, would we really be looking at not expanding the, not having two teachers in kindergarten versus other options that, I don't, I don't know what other options could potentially be, but I mean, if there's any other scenario within the school, uh, grade within the school where, you know, mm -hmm. that 
would be, would be, I don't know. I, right, I mean, that's a whole, I mean, if, there, if there is no override, and so what is the percentage that we have to get to? Yeah. The amount of, yeah, I, I mean, take what you think, all emotions out of it, the amount of different cuts, I mean, you'd have to go to one county. You'd have to go to one county. You'd, you'd have to cut yeah. the amount of positions that you'd have to cut yeah, at. Yeah. yeah. You know, if a percentage point yeah. is 26,000, yeah. a teacher is probably two percentage points. I think the reality is if somebody, if this is their first choice, um, whenever we let them know, they're going to, I mean, you know. Basically, you know, people say by the first or second week of May, we'll let people know. Right. That's right in the calendar line when I was at Frontier in school choice. We didn't make those decisions until usually May anyways because we had to get the enrollment numbers coming up from the elementary yeah. schools before we could make a decision. Yeah. And there's some years we even waited to June. Yeah. You know, I know it's, I would say it's a more of a competitive market for the elementary. Yeah. Um, you know, Frontier is a hot spot for school choice yeah. um, because of all the other same number of sending towns. But um, I don't think it's, it's in the same time frame you're kind of usually in, right? Yeah, approximately. But, we, but can we wait until after the vote? That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. So that's what we said about the. Yeah. Right. If you figured, you said it would be the Saturday after town meeting, which would be the first week of May, right? Right. May fourth. Right? What's that? Is it May fourth? Uh... Yeah. Whatever that is. It's so, so I mean, that Saturday would be the election day. day. So, waiting for the second. I mean, that's within the normal calendar range. You're not really, and you can tell families that's when we're doing. And I think the truth of the matter is you could accept them earlier, but if the override doesn't pass, there would be a chance you're going to lose them. They're going to have to, they're going to want to wait and see what happens there anyways <laughs> before they accept the acceptance. Yeah. yeah. So the, the question, you think, I don't know, maybe not. The, the question Ben put out is still on the table here, I think, which is that there was a figure here of 2943 about art increase mm -hmm. for having yeah. two kindergartens. Right. So, so that is now. as a probably as a point of order, you would need to revote the budget. Okay, so why don't we just have a friendly withdrawing of what we voted so far? Okay, okay and we will uh, have Doug's motion to increase. Well, so then we get to where? Two million nine hundred fifty-six thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars. Two million nine fifty-six nine. Four six. Four six with art From for second kindergarten. Okay, and the and the dollar difference is three hundred fifty four thousand one hundred fourteen dollars. Okay. And the percent increase is thirteen point six. Thirteen point six. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, and so maybe we could just revote my yeah, amendment. Yeah. We should vote. The amendment and then and may motion. <coughs> motion. Yes. Vote, vote the amend, vote the amendment first. Okay. Right. But yeah. So uh, state we'll have the same motion and second. Right. People, right. Right. Okay. I got that already. Yep. Okay. So vote in okay. favor of the amendment. Yep. Five zero. Okay. And now the the actual vote. Um, yep. Barbo again. Okay. Thank you. So you will also you said you'd email so all of us copies. Ben interrupted me with increasing the budget. Right. Have some humor in this bill. Yes, we will send all of you the updated version, and then. Um, and I guess if you want us to also send it there, do you want do you want to send it on to? Oh, you, can you send it the to town? the town hall too? We can send it everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, send so it we'll both. send it to everybody. Yeah. I mean, share. so we'll get the the front sheet to be correct and all the numbers behind it to be correct. Make sure, right. um, make sure we get two eyes yeah. on that before it goes out. Right. And Absolutely. then, yeah. and then, so we'll get that out to them at some point. Right. Imagine some point midday tomorrow. Okay. So that they can get it. Yeah. And including yeah. Sherry on the because Sherry's Thursday. Sherry's okay. the one that we're saying we're saying numbers. probably Thursday they're going to get it. Okay. They're going to get it on Thursday because we need, she's out tomorrow, so we're going to be a day to get that. Okay. All right. All right? Yep.
and you'll get it at the same time so that you have the updated accurate copy. Now, um, I would suggest that there be some presence at Sleckman meetings, if that's possible. I'm going to be away. Uh, Monday? I'm going to be away. I'm going, I have a long scheduled trip that I just sort of forgot about. I did it after this meeting starting, and so we're leaving next Monday, and so I just sort of forgot about the I can be override, there. override sort of conversations. That it's, it's useful to have somebody in the room just to sort of, <coughs> you know, point out that and I have no problem carrying your bags during that trip, so I do accept. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll help. <laughs> but I don't know between, you know, you guys, I mean, I just think it's good to have somebody in the room. Yeah. So, uh, what time they usually start? 6.30. 6 30, right? Yeah, and they post their agendas. Yeah. Okay, and so you can see if they got something else. Often they've got something else first, and so they don't get around to, you know, they may have an appointment or two. Yeah. And then they don't get around to, you know, Basically reviewing the warrant and the motions and the uh, what numbers they're going to do for. Uh, right. Appreciate that. I, in I, the budget. I have a commitment Monday night. But that, I'm going to say that's going to be going on the next three. I'm not. I'm gone for three weeks, and so I'm not coming back. And so I'm the next three Mondays. It would be useful if someone was there. Yep. Okay. The, the first I can come in after negotiations. You know, just to sort of keep in touch. Putting it in my calendar. And I'm generally around on Mondays, too. It's my last hurrah, so, you know. And we didn't ever get to it tonight. Well, I do when we got reports, capital committee report. So, mm. what do we do now? Exciting. Uh, uh, it just, it's just there's a meeting okay. scheduled for next Tuesday. Yeah. And we've got, I mean, I've let them know, and I will go back and tell Sherry again that we're really hoping to get the, the siding and the stuff around the oil tank done, but the windows are sort of realizing that that's probably going to be put off. And um, I don't think that will be a problem, <coughs> but it's, you know, I don't know if there was anybody that uh, could uh, make sure they knew. I don't know if. When I checked with Sherry, it's been a couple of weeks now, she didn't have any backup documentation on the siding and on the oil tank stuff. And Bob's submission indicated um, that he had quotes. So I'm assuming he had something written on a piece of paper from somebody that at least ought to be, you know, would probably at least detail a little bit of what the scope of the job is that could be furnished. You know, it would make it a whole lot simpler for the committee to say, yep, you got your act together and so on. So mm -hmm. if that could be checked. And if it's not been furnished to Sherry, you would need to get there before next Tuesday evening. So they're looking for like a statement of work? work? His, his submission said that he, on the first two, siding in the oil tank stuff, he had a quote. Yeah. Okay, so this, I'm assuming, you know, it may be just a verbal, in which case, just tell him he had a verbal quote, okay, it may be the vendor or something, name of the vendor, or if there's something in writing, could email that over, just because then it gives somebody a sense that, yeah, this is real. Okay, whereas on the windows, he said that was just a rough guesstimate, and he hadn't gone and got any quotes or anything like that. So that was sort of indicating that he wasn't expecting any action. But they haven't had a meeting since November or something like that. Well, now finally it's scheduled for next Tuesday. And it takes place at town offices at 6 o'clock. So I don't know if we could, you know, somebody can find a way of being there. At, mainly to get the information to them. Get the information to them, I think the thing will, I don't think we need to really be there and force to try and get it passed because we're not, but the overall, the mm -hmm. overall pie they're looking at, that should fit in without a problem. You said Wednesday meeting? Tuesday meeting. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday next week, Tuesday. one week from tonight. I just got a notice today. Do you know what time? Six o'clock is usually. Um, I got it on my computer at home. If it's different than six, I'd let you know. The critical thing is get just getting the info, or you, you think, or. Um, <coughs> 
I, don't know I love I having somebody in the room. Yeah, I know. I love having somebody in the room because I might be able to do it. You never know something. what question is going to come up, and you never know whether somebody's going to say, "Well, he's not here." You know, it's easier to say no. Right. Mm -hmm. Capital planning, six o'clock. Yeah. I might be able to make it through. So. Okay, so anyway, that's the capital projects report. Okay, and, and the key thing too is getting something there. That, that, but that'll get delivered in advance, is that? That's thing? what I wanted yeah. to have okay. Cool. I mean, we're on the list. You sent out a list of all the projects. You know, we're on the okay. list there. All three projects are on the list. Okay. But, and the total on the list is something like 25,000 more than what the total available funds was, but if you knock the windows off and, you know, that would leave your room to accept everything on the list from all the different departments. And yeah. assuming there are a couple other things that won't fly, yeah. you know, it should leave them with a reasonable cushion to move forward. <coughs> Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Five-year transportation contract. So what do we got to do? Thank you. Thank you. So the, uh, the the transportation, yeah, I told you. To yeah. Um, so basically, that'll be voted at the joint meeting. So I just want to get that to you ahead of time. Um, and so the the bid came in. We are meeting. No. So the bid came in, um, and <laughs> there was one. You do this enough times. Yeah. Get enough side meetings. Um and it was uh, one bid, and it was the it was Blue Coast Transportation or local provider. Um, and the way he developed the bid is that there's um, no increase to the elementaries, actually down two dollars to the elementaries for transportation, and a significant increase to region. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he was the loan bidder, so we were able to actually talk to him about the bid because it's a um, when you're loan, if there's no loan bid, you're allowed to negotiate the bid. And so we, we talked to him about it. His, his number is a fair number when you look at the contract of those around us. Mm -hmm. And there was a joint bid done up north to save money, and he came in significantly lower mm -hmm. than the joint bid to the north. So, um, but he, the way he's put it is that well, there's a greater strain on the regional, but the regional gets transportation reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And so that was his mentality that would, the communities would be best with that. And, Given the, the financial circumstances of this town and a couple others, that it was we, we kind of agreed that that was how we are moving forward. So, um, what I handed out to you is the legal contract, and the back page was the bid page, so you can actually look at those numbers. If you want to see the whole bid, we have the whole bid packet in the central office. You're welcome to stop by and look through it. Um, there were six people who took out bids, but only one that returned. So it was you know out there and recognized and that kind of stuff. But um, and overall, like I said, I think the, the number was a. A fair number it has increases obviously but so does his business so um, yeah so that's kind of where that is so again it's a, you're, you're signing a contract with the rest of the <clears throat> the other four towns so we decided we should play with that on the joint okay. so let me just keep going the next thing in front of you is the uh, I didn't even wait for you to answer the <laughs> <laughs> um, is the, the calendars that will be um, we do school committee first since it's easier. It's the multicolored one. How do you want to set up school committees for next year? It's important, um, you know, because you because there's five of them, five school committees that we kind of we have to work together when we create the calendar. And then once the calendar is created, it's kind of like a you know one that looks like no. Oh, I got two here. Rainbow colors on it. Right. So, you know, basically, I, I did the model that we did this year, um, basically stacking it outside of budget season and um, not during budget season. So, you know, um, you know, that's kind of what I'm proposing, you know, moving forward. And, um, so we can, you can alter outside of that, but you just can't go into somebody else's lane. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Yep. <laughs> so, Ben's not, Ben's not. Ben's tired. All right. And then the next thing is the school calendar um, on there. You know, I'll just go to the highlights of it. 
that I know is going to be discussed. I, I put in the long weekend before, the extra long weekend for Labor Day weekend, and that is certainly, we don't have to, it's getting late, so we don't have to discuss it. Great desk, but that's kind of gone back and forth. Where some people like it and some people don't, some people, why is it needed? You know, I, I, I made some, I shoveled it a little thick the other night when I made the plea for it. Um, but um, that'll be, I know that the people are gonna, want, are gonna discuss that. The other question on the calendar was, whether or not the 20th on, in December should be a half day or full day before um, the, the holiday break of December. Um, it usually is a half day, but it's usually on the 22nd or 23rd, yeah. in which case, you know, the half day is a little bit closer toward um, a major holiday, but, you know, should they just go full day in on that Friday? So that's kind of going back and forth there too. So I know those are the two just kind of prepare you with those. The other thing that came up is that, oh, I see it's the early release schedule again. And, you know, there's some question of, you know, that that early release PD model probably needs work. Um, not just probably, we know it needs work in the sense of from childcare um, and costs around that. And <clears throat> some of the things that were, as I was sitting in other school committee meetings were promised as part of the, the aftercare on those days, um, you know, we have kind of fallen Falling short on some of those promises, or they didn't pan out the way we that we wanted to. I really, um, I'm proposing that we continue the early release schedule for next year. Um, now that it's been made public that Louise Law is is retiring at the end of this year, um, I don't have a better plan in place, and I don't want to go backwards to no professional development. So um, I'm making the the, the the statement that you know, we are going to look at as an administrative team next year, um, and the replacement of Louise Law would be. You should have a hand in that as well um, as we develop what is the new model for delivering. Is it, this, is it similar to this? But the model prior to this was very little professional development to no professional development. And so I don't want to take a step backwards, but good things are coming. Professional development can be done better, um, especially at the elementary level. I think, yes. I think the secondary has a, has a big advantage in the model because they don't have as much aftercare. You don't have the kids as much to worry about um, and because you know, between athletics and kids going home and being able to watch themselves, it's not an issue. And they're all in one place. So you could break up the groups where we have, we want to get all the third grade teachers together. They got to get in the car. They got to go somewhere. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. And we heard a lot of kind of feedback on that. We try to address different things um, as, you know, try to improve within the area we're improving. But so those are, so that's why it's on there because we, with all the other stuff going on this year, that's not something that I could focus on, but it is something we should be focusing on next year. That's a question though. I just want to make a push for one reason why I super like the early release versus going back to the half days. You get fed on an early release day and you don't want a half day. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and, and what is that, you know, part of the, and we, it's been a long time, so we could, we'll definitely be talking about this in the future. There's a lot of things that there were assumptions when we put this together there also was assumption that most of the kids were going to go home. That was not. Yeah. What, that's not what happened. And then when the school created fun things going on during the times, yeah. you know, so you, you you say, you know, those who are staying will receive this. Will then stay. And if it's anything that's any good, more kids stay. So you, we kind of built our own our own <laughs> problem there. And then you have um, then trying to get IAs who are doing supervision to get professional development. It, it kind of there's a lot of loose things in there. The positive notes is that a lot of initiatives have been carried through and that we're seeing differences in the classroom um, about you know approaches in education and doing it not just alone in one silo of a building but across the district and so and you know when we get to that Ben can talk more about that as well that's yes. what he sees it at the local level there so anyway so that's within the budget those are really the only real besides the start date and end date the start date is the 20 is it is it pr proposed the 28th that we have to get approval um, from the uh, association, oh my god, getting late, because they come back on the 27th, and if they come back before the Wednesday, they have to approve. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's in there too, but they're, they're looking at that now too. So we'll have that all together for the joint meeting. The joint meeting will be a, I'm going to go right into kind of like my superintendent's report, mm -hmm. I don't have anything handing out, but it's going to be a, a longer evening if, um, we're trying, trying to coordinate that we'll have the business directors, um, the candidate for that to be interviewed by the joint committee at that meeting. So instead of doing another meeting on top, we're gonna kind of slide that in. There won't be as, 
we won't have, you know, the, I won't be bringing in um, Sarah and Louise to do, they've kind of done some kind of updates, we're going to have to do that either individually about where we're at um, instead. So I'm trying to line that up in time. I don't want to do that the detriment of, detriment of getting a candidate, so we're in the process right now. Right now it's lining up that it's going to work out that way, but I'm reserving the right that things fall apart between references and people withdrawing or, or not, you know, that kind of stuff that we may have to have another joint meeting to do the interview of that, of that person. Um, so, but we are, we did interviews earlier this week, yesterday, um, and so we are, we have, we have, there were, we had three very solid interviews, and so we're kind of tracking down doing the next step that you do after interviews. So that's where we are in the process. So I kind of went from calendar to right to the superintendent's report, but. Principal? Principal's report. On Friday, March 2nd, uh, Sunderland Elementary School welcomed members of the boys and girls basketball teams from Frontier uh, for Read Across America Day. Uh, they visited all the classrooms um, and read various stories that the kids picked out. Uh, many of the visitors were once roaming the halls of Sunderland and uh, just through private conversations they said they, how, how much they appreciated when, uh, when guests come to the building and they uh, jumped at the chance. Sunderland Elementary School was the recipient of the Seed Keeper Project Award um, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We were the one school in Massachusetts um, recognized uh, for the school's dedication to gardening and it was um, uh, attributed to the work that um, our student body and many staff members put in last year for our back garden space. Uh, the award brought us some seed starter packs, slow release fertilizer, and a gardening book and a plaque. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> not nothing, uh, not yeah, pretty close. close. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but we, we had a few individuals, um, Amanda Berg, uh, Daryl Beamer, Flora Cox, and Molly Wickline, who put in countless hours to get our raised bed garden going. Um, Which and, is cool. Yeah, and went out into the community um, to solicit money. So uh, I don't, this uh, recognition would not have been possible mm -hmm. without uh, their, their efforts. And this past fall, students um, uh, were welcomed with a bountiful uh, amount of cherry tomatoes. So, Excellent. Yes. Uh, upcoming events, PTO tomorrow night. Uh, week from tomorrow night is our annual Arts Night celebration. Um, this evening we are dedicating to uh, school council member Guillermo right. Kohler who passed away this past fall. Um, so we're, we're excited to um, really put on a good show and uh, recognize this special individual. April 2nd is BandFest at Frontier. BandFest is when students uh, in grades four through 12 uh, get together and perform uh, for the community. Our district strings concert, which is just elementary school, um, is at 7 p.m. on April 9th. Uh, also on April 9th, we begin MCAS testing, and that runs through the third week of May. We have our family fun night scheduled for April 25th, and uh, kindergarten screening on May 10th. Um, what else? Our spring concert, May 28th. Our annual spring walk and roll to school day is May, um, May 30th, and that's a typo at the bottom of this page there. So that's it. Do we, yeah. do we know how the uh, the pancake and basket raffle did? The the pancake breakfast was a huge success. We raised over five hundred dollars. Nice. Um, the baskets will be raffled off next week Sweet. during okay. Arts Night. So there's still time to get tickets. There's still time to get tickets. Outstanding. Um, yeah, you can come by any time over the next week or so, or purchase tickets the night of the event. Should have had him here tonight. We should have had him here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> People here are the ones who put those baskets. Well, we can <laughs> <get, laughs> like, get the select board members to get it done that way. Make them buy a few tickets. <laughs> <laughs> any collective or any other? No. No reports? All right. 
the option for executive session. And this comes down to, is there enough movement that we want to... We would mean tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. There really isn't uh, okay. a lot going on. So. After tomorrow, we'll be... I'm sure you'd love to stay somewhere, but... <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Are you ready for a motion to move Yes, I'll move that. All right. Any second? Sure. All right. All in favor? 